You want to know, is this woman a whore? And if she's a whore, G-Man, where is your proof? Because if you ain't got no proof, G-Man, you're slandering and you're just as bad as everybody else. Now, now. <laughs> So I've been watching her and I think it's about time this is said. The woman's lying. The woman is not a Christian. There's some rumors going around that she's a former prostitute and maybe she played around with the idea of Christianity. Hey, 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 Bert, so I know me and you got off on the wrong, on, on the wrong foot and whatnot, but I gotta give you some of that strudel. Mm -hmm. toast. Mm -hmm. Call me burnt toast. Call me. Little girls like burnt toast who needs to grow up and enter puberty. You know what I mean? What about people like burnt toast? The little girl who needs to grow up. Right, burnt toast? Let me walk your car to street, burnt toast. Okay? Toast knows she wants some of that people strudel. She knows it. Yeah. I'll bake you some later when you give me a call. Burnt toast gets exposed into the ground. Burnt toast. She is a whore. She's a former prostitute. Burnt toast. She is a whore. She's a former prostitute. Burnt toast. She is a whore. She's a former prostitute. Smells like rotten fish too. And I'm going to prove it. Burnt toast. She is a whore. She's a former prostitute. Burnt toast. She is a whore. She's a former prostitute. Burnt toast. She is a whore. She's a former prostitute. And I'm going to prove it. So so anyway, burnt toast. I think me and you got off on the wrong foot. I'm gonna give you a second chance to prove yourself. All right. She, she, she's a she's a huge, huge whore. Burnt toes. She is a whore. Burnt toes. She is a whore. Burnt toes. She is a whore. And I'm going and to clean it. Remember, there's a big difference between a righteous judgment and Satan slandering the saints. I, I would never date burnt toast. I would never want to conversate with burnt toast. I think burnt toast is a jerk. I know for a fact that I, I'm really buying into the idea that burnt toast is only about maybe 15 or 16 years old. Burnt toast. Burnt toast. How is a Christian supposed to behave? I'm just curious. How is a Christian supposed to behave? What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. How's everybody doing tonight? Uh, what a weekend. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. A lot to cover today. Uh, just for clarification, because there was a couple people that asked me who are brand new. Um, I do not block people for disagreeing or dissenting opinions. I'm not a lol's cow. I'm not a tragedy pimp. So as long as you keep no doxing, no racism, we're pretty much good. So I actually encourage civil discourse in my chat. So if you can't handle that on either side of that argument, then I don't know what to tell you. But uh, I encourage people to be adults and disagree without deciding to yell in all caps. Cool. All right. Cool. Good evening. Um, what's up, Lisa? Bitter pill. Okay, cool. So the first thing that we're going to get into is... So I've sort of been keeping up with our friend Veda, Potato, Tube Top Tammy, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call her, um, for a while now. And uh, she's really incredibly boring. So I can't really watch much of her, but I happened to catch this a while back. This is from April 22nd. And I've just been kind of like, okay, maybe I should just make a video by itself or whatever, because this is just like a four minute clip. But then I thought, no, I actually want to go live and explain what's going on here. So um, Miss uh, Tube Top Tammy here <laughs> has decided to claim other people's artwork. Yeah, it's not cool with me. Uh, Zena with, with Fire, member for three months. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, chap tests, uh, gifted 10 tasks, sorry, chap tasks, gifted 10 memberships. Thank you so much. Um, Lutu, backup hipster, bash tragedy pimps, uh, Shabi, Shabi, sorry, 
Penguin Mama, Starry Night, The Good Alley, Karma is a Bitch, Mistaken Reaper, and Deborah Ann. Did I get everybody? Uh, thank you, and welcome to the Dumpster Fire. Yep. Okay. So she, this is very bizarre because her stream was not about art at all. And so when she started talking about art, my ears perked up because I thought, where is she going with this? So this is what she started to do. She started to show pictures on her phone and then she would run off and show other framed art that she had, I guess, near where she was sitting, claiming that she actually painted those things. Yeah. Um, there's this thing. I know it's so crazy, right? Um, called reverse image search. And you'd be surprised what I found. And I was not the only one who discovered this. There was quite a few people who contacted me and was like, mm, what's going on here? And so I do what I always do and say, send me the link. And so then I personally double checked everything. I personally took all the screenshots that you're about to see. Okay. And I just thought it was really, really strange because this person, uh, beta potato person, um, oh, I'm sorry, Vaja, I think that's her name, Vaja Jade. I'm going to go with Vaja. So Vaja has been doing like video after video after video, trying to ride the uh, failed coattails of uh, Molly Golightly. Um, she likes to be called MGL, by the way. And she is trying to channel build, right? And so she has been doing all these videos that are like incredibly boring and she gets like hardly any views, which is why I didn't really, really want to talk to her, talk about her today. But this I couldn't really pass up. It's just, you know, low hanging fruit. What can I say? Vaja, Vaja, Vajay Jade. Okay. Maybe it's Vajay J. I don't know. You guys are way smarter than me. Anyway, so she's been doing a lot of videos calling everybody else liars and nitpicking all these little things. And then when you actually look into what she's showing, it doesn't actually prove anything. Don't you just love that? But I was like, this is weird. Someone who um, says that she doesn't have an issue with lying is now lying about something so ridiculous, so outrageous that she, I'm surprised she even less left this up. So, but it's okay, boo. Um, I have this stream downloaded. So if you delete it, I got you. So I'm going to play, I'm going to start playing this. And as she goes through each piece of artwork, I'm going to show you who the actual artist is and, um, right. Okay. Uh, thumbnails are actually my favorite parts, but I love art. Uh, I don't know if any of you know it, but I did a painting for a living for a long time. She's been painting for a living. All right. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of the store earthbound. I, I love like everything hippie -ish. I love anything psychedelic looking, but I'm just like that way. I'm like the stoner type that doesn't smoke weed. But my parents were both hippies, so it just makes me feel at home. So I used to make um, uh, like psychedelic elephants, nature zoo creatures, just or animals. Um, I made a really nice peacock. That was mm. probably my favorite painting, and I sold it for eight hundred dollars. So she's claiming that she painted a peacock and sold it for eight hundred dollars. All right, all right. Her voice, though, yeah, I actually sped her up because I could not take her at regular speed. You're not missing much, I promise. Um, it was an acrylic painting on a blank canvas. It was probably, I think it was a, let see if I have a picture of it. So acrylic painting on a, okay. That peacock. All right. And I'll show y'all my painting I did. Let's see the I'll painting. I'll show you a sample of that my art that I've done. Hmm, and okay. here's you something else to make fun of. No sense. Oh, no. No, no, no. It's, it's burnt toast now. I got you. She's probably going to hate on my picture. No, I'm just going to laugh at you. The painting is actually beautiful, but you're a fucking liar, so. But... Let me find you that painting. I know that I know exactly. I know exactly where it is. Give me one second. I just <laughs> want to show y'all what I used to do uh, for a living. She did this for a living now. I okay. Think in Google Photos, you can just like type in the word <laughs> painting, and all my paintings should just come up. Let me see. She did this for a living. Oh my I god! I did it. Is this after like? Because I've watched other streams that she's done, and she's claimed to do a lot of different things for a living. So I think we have another Bullhorn Betty situation where it's like she's the expert in everything. Very good job. With Please slow chat. Okay. I can do that. I'll let this play for a little bit. So here's one I did of myself. Okay. And it says, let me brighten the screen so y'all can see it. It says, time to wind down and stay home. That is a canvas I did. You can see it's up on my wall. 
Okay. She claims that she painted that, that that was a canvas that she did. Let me slow the chat a little bit. Sorry about that. I hate doing that, but mods are asking. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, okay, so quick uh, Google image search. It was, none of these were very hard. You can do it yourself. You just pause her video, take a screenshot of the painting, go to Google reverse image and all kinds of things come up. So she claims that she did that. Okay, sure. So this is the actual painting. See, this is the actual painting. It is by someone named Rongro DeVoe, and it's called Time to Wind Down. It is uh, sold on various websites. Um, let's see if I actually clicked on the artist profile. I don't think I did for that, but yes, um, she did not, absolutely did not do this painting. Um, this is somebody else's artwork. Yes. And there's more. Time to wind down, and that's me. So that's one little... So not only does she say that she painted it herself, freehand, like, we're not talking about paint by number, guys, okay? Or fill in the blank. She's actually saying that she painted these paintings on a blank canvas. Then she goes as far as say that the person in the painting is her. Here's the thing. That same artist made multiple different versions of the same painting. Some of them have blonde hair. Some of them have dark hair. Some of them have different colored eyes. So yeah, it's, that is absolutely a lie. Thank you, Annie. Welcome to the dumpster fire. What's up, daddy's baby girl? What's up? Small one I did on just like an 11 inch panel. And then I want to show you the bed. Oh, y'all want to see my guitar table? This is made out of blown glass. Okay. Um, got a, this is a blown glass table. So she did not clarify as to whether she actually painted this or made this. Um, here's the thing. No shade on people that get furniture from places like this. Okay, no shade. Let's see, where is it? Did I get a screenshot of it? Shoot. Okay, it's not in here. So, yeah, so if you... Uh, Reverse image search this. It goes back to a website called Rooms to Go, and it is a mass manufactured table that you can buy at Rooms to Go to go with the furniture that you buy. It's not hand blown glass. Uh, it wasn't made by some famous artist. She didn't paint that. It's from Rooms to Go and no shade. Okay. But for her to claim that somehow she made it or it's something that it's not, that's, that's weird. That's very weird. But JJ, it's very weird. Isn't that beautiful? That's my favorite table I have. One day I'll give you a tour of my house. How about that? Okay. But I'm dying to show y'all this peacock painting super quick. Maybe if I type in the word peacock, it'll, it should just come up. Okay, here's some of my paintings right here. So I think this is around the time. I think this is around the time I made that. There it is. Got it. This is a huge image. Let me move this light so it's not. So she's also such a genius that she doesn't realize that the light glare is actually in the picture and not in, like, real life. So this was kind of funny. Um, let me get that, that light reflector off of it. That's me in the bathtub. Yikes. Oh, before I accidentally show y'all a new to mine. Okay, so, right. So I looked this up, and guess what? It's on a website called PX Pixels. It's by an artist called Wilson Lau. And they have stationery, phone cases, wall art. They have all different versions of the same peacock. Some of them are more purpley, blue, and green. Some are more orange, red, and yellow. But it's essentially the same painting. And it says on the bottom here, it says, Peacock is a painting by Wilson Lau, which was uploaded August 26, 2013. Yikes. Another lie. I don't know how to make the light reflecting go away. That is a, let me, let me figure out how to make this light. 
I think it's from the picture, not the actual light. Hold on. Let me find one that's not reflecting the fucking... Why are all of these reflecting? I should have took better pictures of that damn. Um, ooh, that's what I did. I don't know if y'all can see it because it's very like psychedelic, but it's mushrooms. Also a lie. <laughs> I mean, I just went through. I just did a simple Google image search. So this you can buy on Amazon for $19.99. It's by a brand called Doppergangle 33 LTD. I've also found it on various other websites. It's basically from a company called Trends Incorporated. Is that? I think it's Trends International. So anyway, um, it is a print. It's not a painting. It's a print. Just want to throw it out there. It's not a pastel on a canvas. It's a print. Okay. Puff Puff Pass, welcome to the dumpster fire. Thank you. I appreciate that. What the hell is wrong with her? Great question. I have no idea. <laughs> this is why people like this keep getting reviewed. That's why people keep talking about them, keep making videos about them, because they lie about the most ridiculous things. I don't know anybody like her in real life. If I did, I'd be like, <laughs> I don't know you. Like, this is weird. This is like, why even lie about this? The psychedelic sun. Um, but if you've ever heard of Earthbound, right? I, I used to sell my paintings to Earthbound. To I tried to look for the Earthbound website, could not find it. So I don't know if they went out of business or whatever, but I could not find it. I also um, looked up various different versions of whatever name that she has gone by on various public social media platforms. Um, nothing comes up pertaining to art whatsoever. Nothing. For them to sell in their store. Earthbound is like a hippie, earth, earthy store. And I had signed a contract with them to sell my paintings there. Um, but here's when I had it ready to go to send off. Isn't that beautiful? I love how, like, there's the orange clearance sticker on the bottom. That's my favorite part. I love doing that painting. <laughs> but back to thumbnails. I want, this is my son's. This is, um, let's see. Such a talent to have mastered so many different styles of painting, right? But don't, don't tell her. She doesn't even know enough about art to know that there's different um, types of paint, different um, mediums. There's just different types of styles of everything. And the fact that she's just like this expert of everything is uh, pretty amazing. In fact, she is so good. She can paint a print. <laughs> Bet you can't do that. Yeah, that's my sister's son's. My sister's son, I always call my son. Look up Earthbound Trading Company. Okay, I will definitely do that. Because when he was little bitty, right? When he was little bitty, I had him all the time. My sister had to work 24-7. And he used to call me Ma, her mommy. Ma, mommy. So we just both, like, credit him as our son. It's very weird. That is, it's very strange. Um, whoa, this is wild and disrespectful to actual artists. It really is. And I actually have some friends that are actual artists, they do it for a living. And when somebody tries to steal their art, it is like, that's so disgusting. It's the same as if you wrote a song and then someone plag plagiarized it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's really, really messed up. Um, Cause I can't have kids, all right. That's probably a good thing. I wanna show y'all his little project. I'm gonna zoom in on it. So he had a little project for school to do and um, they wanted him to do a pirate theme. So I had done this with him and he did a damn good job. He's gonna be just like me, I know it. So this was from a collection um, by an artist named Rose May Thien Pierre, I think. I found it on a website, it was a European website where you can buy her art. This particular painting was from 2019. However, there was a whole bunch of paintings that was almost identical to the one that she held up. Um, there was a whole series of children's paintings that had planets and stars with the same, I mean, it was exactly the same. So it's yet another time where she's claiming that art is hers when it really isn't. Um, but this is a pirate theme that he did, and I did the sky for him in the moon, but he did the little sand and the little gems. Isn't that cute? 
Oh, no, this is a tapestry that I bought. I didn't do this one. Nope, I didn't do this one. Tapestry. I'll show you one more that I did, though. Hold on. And I did then this one for my nephew. There's more. <laughs> I did this for my nephew, and I'm going to send it to him for his birthday. Okay. Right. So I looked this up, and it's on this website called Poshmark, where somebody is selling it um, for 45 bucks. It actually comes with two different Mickey Mouse. These are prints, by the way, the same exact frame that she has hers in. Um, here's another one on another website. This was, I think, where it was originally from. Um, these prints were, um, it had that said that the artist lived in somewhere in Utah. So, right. Uh, again, these are prints. You're not paintings. So I don't know what she's talking about here. Isn't that cool? I mixed watercolor with acrylic on this one. She mixed watercolors with acrylic. How do you look images up? You go to Google and you type in Google reverse image and then you click you take a screenshot of whatever painting that I that she did and I dragged it onto the screen and let go and it will tell you what websites and the artist and when it was made and all of that. That's how you can do that. Very, very simple. Patricia Sell, member for six months. Thank you so much. It does hurt because the art. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you one of these days, these people are going to start getting sued. I just, I don't understand why lie about something so easily proven. How many hours do you think it took her to save all those to her phone? <laughs> she had to get the lighting right. Kidding me? That took hours. <laughs> now let's just get on. Okay. So that's really all I had for her other than, oh, I did want to show a couple more. So this was another one of the mushroom psychedelic one where you can buy it on Redbubble. Um, it said it was designed and sold by Moomime Fish 3. So I clicked on his profile. And it's a gentleman um, who has a profile on there. He's been posting things for a while. So that's the artist. He's been on this since 2017. Right. Let's see if there's any other ones. Um, oh, and there's a furniture store. Kind of like rooms to go or big lots and things like that where you can buy like whole rooms of things. This was our furniture store and they sell children's art. And this was the exact painting that she was holding up. Um, they were selling it. You can buy it as children's art to go with the children's furniture that you buy at their store. So there was that. See if there's any other screenshots that I missed. And... I think that was about it. Yeah. So, I mean, clearly she was lying about that. Why she was lying, I have no idea. <laughs> None whatsoever. But yeah, that's kind of what these people do. Okay. So, moving on, um, we're going to do something. Okay. So, there is a clip from this morning, obviously, the date's on there, July 10th, that uh, Bullhorn Betty was talking about Zav Girl and that whole situation. So we're going to go over that and talk about Zav Girl for a little bit. And then we're going to move on to Bullhorn Betty's stream from the 7th, which was insane. I painted the Sistine Chapel ceiling. Have you seen it? <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's a print. Yeah, it was definitely a print. The Mickey Mouse was a print. It was not a painting. You know, um, if she did paint by numbers, all of those things, what they did not look like paint by numbers, then she should have said that. Um, there's nothing wrong with paint by numbers or whatever, but to claim that she painted that from scratch on a blank canvas, uh, that's, it's just simply not true. And um, if she used to do painting for a living, then she will have paintings that she actually did that other people aren't also claiming from like five years ago. So just a thought. Uh, Sofla Mama, welcome to the dumpster fire. Thank you so much. 
Uh, Zap's community page is blowing up. It's going off road since she posted a few hours ago. Yeah, so we're going to go over that as well. Full disclosure, I heard about Zab Girl back when the Kylie Rodney case was happening. I do not do true crime, okay? I don't do true crime, but a lot of the people that I review dip their toes in true crime. And so inevitably, those two communities end up meshing. Okay. Number two, Zab Girl, when I heard about her, um, there were other channels who were reviewing her and I watched those channels and I saw her with my own eyes doing streams with Kylie Rodney Case, um, perpetuating just flat out fabrications, just, just flat out lies that were hurting Kylie's family, that were hurting Kylie's friends that was hurting that whole community there. And I just said, that's a really disgusting person, whatever. Um, but now she's kind of got back on my radar because uh, Bullhorn Betty has decided to start white knighting for her. And I love this. Actually, I, this is like, you know, tarred alliance here. I love this because Bullhorn Betty is looking for subs. She's looking for a channel that has 90,000 plus subs, just like Molly did, so that she can start siphoning off support and subscribers. And I love the fact that she is going to start mentioning Zab Girl and name drop her to try to get notoriety on her failing channel. I love that for both of them. Bullhorn Betty is like, <laughs> if you align with Bullhorn Betty on this platform, your, your channel is not going to do well. So I love the fact that both Bullhorn Betty and Zab Girl have been talking together in comments uh, kissing each other's ass. And we're going to go over that. Of course, Bullhorn, the Karen would jump into defending Zab Girl. Look what she did to the photos of Quentin Simon. Yeah, this is uh, this is a bit much. Th this goes way further than just a FOIA request. So we're going to listen to um, Betty talk about this and um, defend Zab Girl. And then we're going to get into what Zab Girl actually posted and all the fuckery. So to the Zab girl might as well just go ahead and just dive right into this whole autopsy thing and what good morning emma it's nice to see you love i love seeing your name in my chat today i love hearing from you honey so god bless you big virtual hug big virtual hug so when it comes to Zab girl i know that many of my audience may or may not agree with my statement okay this is going to be one that i'm just going to tell you what you need to hear not what you want to hear the bottom line is, is this country, we used to be blocked out of everything. This country worked very, very hard because we are the taxpayers of this country and all our employees. So our government is our employees. They are required to be transparent now. I, I love how she thinks that somehow the government is completely transparent now because of FOIA request. Okay, Betty. Once upon a time, they could shovel stuff under the rug. We were none the wiser. Oh, okay. We we had no access to. So the government doesn't shove anything under the rug anymore, guys. That is over. Find out what they were doing behind <laughs> the scenes. Now, mind you, these are our employees. And we can't even find out what they're doing. So we, as the country, pushed along laws that forced our government to be beholden to us, the employers of them, right? The taxpayers. And part of that is public record, okay? You cannot, and when you have a trial, a trial is a public trial. That means all that information that is in that public trial is public and up for public consumption. Um, not necessarily. There's a lot of cases where things are sealed because minors are involved. There are cases that are sealed because it was sort of a heinous uh, sexual crime that occurred. Sometimes it's open, sometimes it is not. There are some cases um, where the judge allows people to stream the live um, proceedings of the trial. And then there are some cases where there is a gag order because for whatever reason, the judge believes that in that particular case, it would hinder justice for either the, the plaintiff or the defendant if there was any kind of outside interference involving you know, live streaming the case or whatever. So, I mean, again, Bullhorn Betty likes to 
paint these big, broad brushes all the time. And she doesn't understand what the fuck she's talking about. Um, so yeah, I mean, sometimes it's, it's public. Sure. Sometimes it is not. So Betty thinks she's a taxpayer somewhere just because she buys fast food at seven coffees there and stays in a motel with holes in the wall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's up, Gabby? What's up? Period. Oh, Hartley, I completely agree. BHB needs a gag order. Mm. Yep. It is our right as citizens to acquire those documents. They don't provide you those documents during the trial. The only time you can achieve or receive those documents is after trial when you do a public record request. This is open to anybody, not just media, not just movie stars, not just big pictures. This is open to all citizens of the United States. You, are, uh, you have the ability to pull records in this country under the Freedom of Information Act. And that's correct. And I'm all for it for you. So don't don't get it twisted. You know, I think that the you know, that the ability for a regular citizen like you and I to be able to get a FOIA request. I think that it's great. I see nothing wrong with it. But that's not what we're talking about here. But Bullhorn Betty and Zav Girl and a bunch of other people that are simping for them are trying to create the straw man that somehow people are saying that somehow FOIA requests are bad and evil. And that's not the argument here. Atomic Karen, thank you so much. Tick parasiting a leech. I bow to her genius, right? Yeah. Mm. It wasn't a FOIA. It was a court records request. Thank you so much. Yes. I also learned that today that what she did was actually not a FOIA request. It was a court records request. And I learned that because one of my mods is the fabulous Mystery Maven, who is an attorney. And she was on Queen Bee's panel today and explained everything. And um, yeah, I mean, let's just say uh, people are not happy. So stay tuned, folks. With that being said, I believe that Zab Girl did the appropriate thing by putting it behind a wall and not making it public for anybody and everybody to preview it. That would have been the appropriate, the appropriate procedure for discussing this. Do, does she have a right to discuss it? Absolutely. Is it public record? It absolutely is. Now, I realize that a lot of people, this is an emotional, emotional for them. You know, it's emotional to think that somebody is reviewing a case. What is the difference? I'm assuming you mean what's the difference between a FOIA request and a court records request? That is a great question. And I don't know. That is definitely something that I'm going to ask Mystery Maven. And I will be getting back to you because I would like to know the difference myself. Like I said, I don't know a whole lot about Zav Girl other than this situation and everything is very fluid right now. So if I don't know something, I'm going to be honest and tell you, I don't know. And I honestly don't know. So unless Mystery Maven happens to pop in the chat to explain, um, I will ask her after this live is over and see if she can message me back because I'm, I'm very interested in that as well. We have that right to review those cases. And we have the right if our audience so chooses to want to learn about those cases and see what we have about those cases, they have the right to learn about those cases. They have a right. Every single one of you have a right to learn about those. And many of our audience don't know how to pull public records. They don't know how to get these files. They don't know how to review these cases. They rely on people like me, people like uh, the docket, people like truth and transparency. Now, granted, you know, they may have blurred certain um, images, but that's up to their discretion. And as offensive as that may be to some people, that is how it is. It is not. It is up to whomever gets those documents, how they would like to present them. They are public record. What Zab Girl did was not illegal. It did not violate any policies. She did it the right way. She blocked it from the general public and those who would like to see it could see it. Now, people are talking about a paid wall. How else are you supposed to keep it from the general public? What's on, uh, what's Patreon? Okay, so Patreon is another platform that is a paid platform. So an update on that, Zab Girl did post it on her Patreon. She was 
it seems as though she understood that it was against the terms of service on Patreon to post the things that she was posting. And so to get around that, she chose to use something called Dropbox. And however, once Patreon found out that their platform was being used to show pictures of a deceased minor child, some of which was not blurred, where there were people commenting in that Patreon channel, disgusting jokes, making fun of the child's private parts. Betty, um, if you think that's okay, then you're more fucked up than I thought you are. Because again, the argument is not about whether or not she had the right to get the court records. That's not the argument here. It's what she did with it. XYZ, welcome to the dumpster fire. I appreciate that. And what I'm talking about is this. This was a tweet from this morning. There were a ton of people that were posting about this. And it says that not sure what's worse, Zav girl posting Gannon Stout's autopsy photos, videos for $3, or Natasha Cooper following suit and selling the same autopsy photos for $3 on her Patreon, or the ones paying for it to make these types of careless, disgusting comments. I'm not going to read that out loud. You guys can read it for yourself. To be clear, Zav girl did not post this. But one of the people, or one of her Patreons in there did. Here's the thing, Zav girl. Even though you didn't post that kind of comment, the buck stops with you. Ultimately, it falls on your shoulders because it's your responsibility. This is your Patreon. This is your channel. This is your content. And I'm not blaming you for the comment because you have no control over what someone else posts, but you certainly have control over what you do when you see something like this. Because let me tell you that if one of my audience members, even if it was a mod that I have known for years, if they posted something like this, not only would I publicly call them out and take their wrench and tell them to fuck off, but I would privately have a come to Jesus meeting with them. And let me tell you, it's not going to end well for them. That would be the end because this kind of comment holds a lot of weight because this is not just some like joke that somebody made. Think what they're actually saying here. Why are they focusing on that part of the photo? That's the question I'm going to leave you with. Why is that what they focused on? Now, no one seems to know who actually left the comment. But God help the person if I find out who did, who did leave the comment. I hope that you don't have a channel. You better not be a, a moderator or a anybody in my audience. But if I ever find out and have concrete proof of who it is that said that kind of comment, yeah. Okay. You're on notice. But this is disgusting. And Zav Girl wants to act like it's no big deal. Oh, guys, people are threatening me now. Um, I wonder why. Do I endorse that? No. And I hope nobody in my audience is doing that bullshit because I, I, I will never be able to stand behind somebody threatening somebody else. But what I suspect is going on is that she's getting heat. She's getting people being extremely angry and critical with her. And then she's calling it threatening. When in reality, it's just bruising her ego. So this is, let me show you something else. 
This was the community tab that Zav Girl did. It's long as hell. I screenshotted it. Obviously, you can see it's not edited. Okay. It was right at 11 minutes after she posted it. Okay. This is what she says. Hey, guys, I want to address what's going on right now with the Gannon autopsy corner video I created. Unfortunately, this seems to be something where people are very divided on how they feel about it, and I'm hearing a lot from both sides. The reality of the situation is that different people feel differently about this. Some people generally think making a video, including the autopsy photos, is bad, and I respect their opinion and feelings. Other people like myself think of autopsy photos and the coroner discussing explaining them as interesting and informative and are able to view it as a mere science in a mere scientific detached way. It's just one of those things where it depends on the person. Okay, that comment where they are making a joke about his private part, how was that science scientific? How was that detached? It sounded like they were being disgusting. I was going to say another word, but I'll just stick with disgusting. She goes on. I am not adamantly against taking down the video if people are truly unhappy about it, and I will absolutely consider doing that. But right now, it seems that there are a lot of other people who are acting in bad faith, creating lies for fun and excitement in order to pit others against me. So she's already, one, not taking responsibility, two, not thinking about the family, and three, again, trying to blame it. It's, some, it's always somebody else's fault. And my question to her is, uh, what, like, y whose channel is this? It's yours. Whose Patreon was it? It's yours. Whose Patreons were they? They were yours. Guess who's responsible for that, Zab Girl? That would be you. Again, you can't control what other people are posting on your platforms. But once you discover what they posted, you do have complete control over whether it stays there or not. And why was it that it stayed there long enough for a ton of people to get screenshots of it? I would like that question answered as well. Um, it says, if you've heard the latest rumor that I've been distributing photos of Gannon's genitalia, I assure you I have not, and his genitalia isn't visible in any of the autopsy photos or the autopsy corner video. That is a fucking lie. Because there are people who actually went in there to see what was being posted. And guess what? Some of them were blurred, and some of them were not, Zav girl. Otherwise, why would your own Patreons be making comments about what it looked like? So it's a bit difficult to sort out what's what. What do you mean it's difficult? It's your Patreon. You go in there, you see the comment, and you fucking delete it. That's what you do. And you tell the person to knock it off. That's what I would do. Because that would be the right thing to do. Um, where there are other creators who have the same autopsy photos up right here on YouTube for public viewing on their channel where anyone can stumble across them and they're not being attacked as I am right now. It becomes obvious that some of this hate I'm receiving is not genuine and is being done for other reasons. YouTube drama gets clicks. Um, hey, Zav Girl, did you think about the whole YouTube drama gets clicks when you were um, slandering Kylie Rodney's family and friends? When you were going with that whole bullshit? Because Pepperidge Farm remembers. Also, Zav Girl. Um, I'm not seeing anybody post naked pictures of a dead child. Is, is, is like, where are they? Show me the channels that are doing that and I will call them out the same. Wait, what corner explained these photos in her video? I have no idea. Apparently, what I do know is that there was some sort of video where the coroner was explaining it. And apparently she talked over all of it. And then it was like people were making jokes about the child. 
She says, I understand some of you have issues with me charging money on my Patreon for the video. If I was charging money for the autopsy files alone or something like that, I think I see, I'd see your point. But in this case, I spent a lot of time and worked hard putting together a video lining up the coroner's audio and description along with the appropriate part of the photos she is describing and editing it together to try to make it as informative as possible for the viewer. This is what I am charging for, which I would hope you can agree is understandable. Wow. Okay, thank you, Queen. She took the clips of the coroner speaking at the trial and she put it in her video and called it scientific. Wow, that's not surprising. That's that's not science, <laughs> Zab girl. Sorry to break it to you. Uh, that is not how that works. Okay. Um, so right before or right after, I don't know which, she posted this. It was found out, um, it was released on Twitter that both Natasha Cooper and Zab Girl's Patreon were taken down by Patreon. Because it turns out, Zav girl, you fucked around and found out. Natasha Cooper, she ain't fuck right on off because she was absolutely doing it so she can make money because she's a slob and doesn't want to get a job. Zav girl, you know better because apparently after the original link was posted and it was rejected or taken down, she kept reposting it over and over and over and over and over and over again because she was trying to get the link to stay on her Patreon account. That leads me to believe that she knew that something was wrong and Patreon was not allowing her to keep it up and she kept putting it up anyway. So you know what Patreon did? They took your ass down. And I'm glad that they did because anybody, I don't care who you are, you post pictures like that and you have that kind of bullshit happening. No, that is absolutely against terms of service. It's disgusting. And you know what? I hope the family sues the fuck out of you 100% because that was just I, I can't even put into words and the fact that you have such no like no empathy whatsoever and no self-awareness to even think about how the family was going to feel that you were going to post pictures that were not blurred on your patreon and have people make jokes about the stuff that wasn't blurred Mystery Maven, thank you. I'm so glad you're in the chat. Can you answer? The question is, what is the difference between a FOIA request and getting court records? I'm wanting to know, people in the chat are wanting to know, what is kind of the TLDR? What's the difference between the two? I would love to hear your answer on that. Oh, boy. So, right. So, I went to Patreon myself, and it says that it has been removed. Let me see if I can get, oh, here is the Nana of the family posted this today. I am Gannon's Nana. This is devastating. Why would anyone do this? It's heartbreaking. Our hearts all over again. If this happened to one of their children, it would not happen. Please let our family find some peace. Our hearts will never be the same. This goes out to all families that have lost loved ones. Some people don't have a heart, no feelings at all. Have respect, our family. This is a nightmare. Please respect us. I don't understand why anyone would do this. Thank you, Jess Larry. I'm going back to my space and a flip phone. <laughs> hey, what's up, Eric? What's up? Yeah, so this is this is the grandmother. I'm assuming Nana it means grandma. That's devastating. And you would think that after the family would post something like that publicly, you would think she'd be like, oh, shit, I fucked up. I'll just go ahead and take it down. So, oh, I got more. I got more. So somebody then, after Zap Girl says, it's for science. Um, somebody says, hey, uh, Zap Girl, would you still think putting up autopsy pics of a child would be cool for science if that child was yours? Your friend's child, your little brother or sister. Zap Girl says, quote, yes, ma'am. I would definitely be okay with it. Everyone is different. So stop thinking your way is the only way. I respect people who are sensitive to that. But if you're asking me, yes, I would 100% be okay with that, I guess is what she meant. 
So you're a sociopath. Is that what you're saying here? Allegedly in Minecraft. I've got words. Thank you so much. I Googled her Patreon and it's still up though. It may have gone back up. And I checked it earlier. Let me try again. I've got words. What is it? For science, she never does anything for science before. Um, isn't that interesting, right? She always plays the victim. All these people always play the victim. That's like their MO. So let me go to her. Go to her channel. Go down to her link. It says this page has been removed. So it's still down. It's still down. <clears throat> We're actually going to be moving over to Patreon. I've, I've had the account set up for well over a year. I've just never done anything with it and never promoted it. And I can tell you that, you know, it, I understand that many people are offended, okay? And I understand the uh, uh, offensiveness that seeing a young child's autopsy report, um, but it's part of the public record. And this is what I was talking about related to Kylie Rodney when everybody was saying, oh, well, the parents don't need to um, release the autopsy. And I told you, as soon as this goes to trial, that autopsy is going to be part of the public record and that autopsy will be discoverable by the public. I mean, this is pretty on brand for Bullhorn Betty because she's done video, she's done streams where she talked about not all children are worth saving, that some children should be euthanized, that she believes that there should be the death penalty for children. So, I mean, it's really no like different off brand from her for her to sit here and be like, oh, I agree with Zav girl. We should like look at pictures of, of minor children's private parts and laugh at them. Of course, she's going to be okay with that. It is a public trial. It's a public record. Whether we like it or not, this is the laws. Our laws are not uh, based on emotion. Okay. I know that a lot of us have, you know, emotional and moral and, and other things that keep us from doing certain things, but it doesn't mean that you can't, it doesn't mean that it's unlawful. And again, the law has no emotion. Okay. It's not emotion. It's not emotional. I just have to say this. <laughs> Bullhorn Betty is currently trying to sue Queen B for emotional distress. And yet here she is saying that she doesn't get emotional and YouTube doesn't bother her. Betty, shouldn't have said that <laughs> at all. And by the way, um, if you go to my Twitter, I have it pinned. Um, there is a PayPal pool for the legal fund to help Queen defend herself. Bullhorn Betty is only suing her for, I mean, it's, it's completely frivolous. It's all lies. Um, it's ridiculous. And um, she's doing it because she's like, oh, you know, I'm going to financially drain her and put her in a bind. And I think it's fucked up. Like she knows that Queen Bee um, is a single mom and is struggling. And she's doing this to be a bitch. She's being a bitch. And so if anyone would like to donate, you do not have to. And this is, I have to say, the first time in three and a half years of my channel's existence, this is the first time I have ever pushed a donation. And it's because I have spoken to Queen um, in depth. I know that she's getting a lawyer. The receipts are going to be posted on the update section of the PayPal pool link. I will grab that link for you now. I have personally donated myself. Okay. Here is the link. Hold on a second. Let me pin it. There you go. And um, I have vetted it completely. I completely stand behind um, what Queen and her lawyer um, are going to do. And uh, fuck you, Betty. Uh, have fun. We're emotional. The law is not. And the law is black and white. 
So for those that are wanting to go out and beat up Zab Girl, you know, just take a step back because there's going to be a time when those public records, because maybe somebody is arrested wrongfully, convicted wrongfully, those public records are the only thing that help those people get out of those troubles. It's those public records. It's people like activists and, and people that like that, that nonprofit that goes around the Innocence Project. They would never be able to help any of their clients without public record laws. That means showing unobstructed autopsy views. And again, I understand that many people are emotional, that this was in bad taste for a lot of people. The law is not black and white. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't tell her anything. You know, she knows everything, guys. Like, she is, she's a law expert. But I just want to let you know, in my opinion, she did it the right way. She had a right to share it. She did have a right to share it. She has a lawful right to share it. You know, and again, it, it may be offensive. I wouldn't watch it personally. Um, you know, had I had the autopsy, I may have gone over the information. I don't know if I would have showed all the all the photos because I believe, you know, it is a responsibility. But if I was behind a private wall with the people that want to see it, um, would I have shown it? It's possible I could have. I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not presented or put wow. in that. Uh, position. I have not been put in that position wow. for me. So you mean you don't know whether you would actually do what Zab Girl did? Post unblurred pictures of that child while your Patreon sat there and made fun of his private parts. You're not sure if you would do that or not. Are you serious right now? Wow. Okay. It determined one way or another or how I would have handled that situation. But to think that she needs to have her channel terminated for doing a lawful act is ridiculous. Um, I think people need to quit being so emotional, but I'm not an emotional person. You're not an emotional person, but you're suing someone for emotional distress. <laughs> Girl, stop. Okay, so thank you, Mystery Maven. She says, FOIA applies, a FOIA request applies to executive branch agencies, judicial branch courts, not subject to FOIA law. Instead, courts have rules for making a document request. The rules vary by jurisdiction. Let's see. Okay, so that is what she says about that. You know, I, 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 an emotional person privately, professionally, I'm not. I'm not a, an emotional person. I look at this stuff um, black and white. That's your opinion, palm tree lover. It's wrong is your opinion. To other people that are curious about the case, it was information that they needed to understand. Why did you need to see a child's naked body? Hmm? Why did anyone need to see that? Maybe it's just me because I don't do true crime, but I'm, I'm calling bullshit on that. What random person on the interwebs needed, actually needed to see that? I'm thinking they didn't. They wanted to, they didn't need to. And I've heard this said before and I'll repeat it. Zav girl would absolutely not have done this unless she wanted the money. Let's just be real. She did this for the fucking money. Which is why when it got too hot, she did that community tab post claiming that she's the victim and that she didn't actually show anything. Okay. Um, Patreon supports YouTubes individually. Her comment about not being an emotional, I honestly help you in court. Just the thought I donated. Okay, cool. Um, I would love to see Bullhorn Betty spend time in prison. It may bring her down a few pegs, and I bet she would be scared shitless in there, not the tough bitch she acts now. Who knows? Who knows what the future holds? So many great comments and I'm missing them. I, I feel sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, leave the children alone and quit making them carnival peep show. Yes. They're tragedy vultures. They're tragedy pimps. And let me explain something to you. There is nothing vapid people love more than to make other people's tragedies about them. And that's what the vast majority of these people like her do. They make it about themselves 
And then they, like a vulture, just pick, 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 picks at whatever's left of the case when the actual professionals are done adjudicating it. If you knew what I had to watch behind the scenes to be able to explain some of these cases to you, you would wonder why I'm not in a padded room. So that's your opinion. And you know what? In, in, in all fairness to you, palm tree lover, you don't have to watch it, right? You don't have to tune in. Those that would like to see it and want to tune in, that's for them, not for the people that don't. When I put that 911 call up, I didn't stop from putting that 911 call up. That killed me to hear that 911 call. I was in here in tears listening to that 911 call. Those were adults. It was very weird that you put that out to begin with. But I mean, Betty. Wow. Okay. You're saying too much here, girlfriend. You should probably get a lawyer because you are, you are saying too much. Many of you don't know that. Did it stop me from putting it up? No, it didn't. Because it's a public record that I received above board lawfully. It is content for this channel. It's going to a case mm -hmm. that I'm covering. Yep. We are all adults here. Mm. Many adults are a little more curious than others. And you don't have to agree with people. Just because you don't agree with them doesn't make it right or wrong, in my opinion. So why are you suing people, Betty? It's really, it's really interesting because on here you'll be like, well, if you know, if I don't like something, then I just don't watch. And then behind the scenes, you're like, I'm a victim. I'm watching this and it's hurting my feelings. I'm suing. It's just, again, Betty, you probably should not have said that out loud. It's your opinion. And I really, I really hope that people start realizing you do not have to watch something if you do not like it. And I can't wait for a judge to tell you that. <laughs> like, this is just... Oh, I knew I see. I knew she was going to do this because she cannot help herself. Uh, Mystery Maven says her logic is so flawed. We also have we also had slavery in the United States and it was legal, but totally immoral and wrong. Then we changed the law by passing a law doesn't change that it was immoral and wrong in the first place. That is correct. Uh, BBG says in one breath, she says she does not get emotional about these cases. And the next she says she does. Which is it? Um, I think it's whatever she thinks it's going to get her a super chat that day. You can turn the channel. You can choose not to support that creator or the content that they provide you. And yes, yeah, she did say black and right. She 100% did. Oh, I remember the, the, uh, the comment. I don't remember who said it. So I apologize because it was going pretty fast, but somebody mentioned that <sighs> just lost it. I'll remember it in a second you as the audience have to do okay i remember now yeah she was comparing zab girl's situation to the innocence project and the only reason why she brought up the innocence project is because i had dreamed about that to debunk some of the lies that she was saying about cases so okay to go around and try to destroy somebody's channel for doing a lawful act that you disagree with to me is petty but you're doing that, Betty. How many people have you false copyright struck? You've false copyright my, my channel multiple times. You just did it back in April and YouTube told you to kick rocks. And you sat there and wanted to argue with them back and forth until YouTube was like, um, yeah, stop. How many people have you false reported their channel? How many times have you threatened to sue someone? over some bullshit that's not even against the law. Betty, just stop. And emotional and irrational. Betty, emotional and irrational. So again, it is your responsibility as the audience to choose to tune in to watch what you want to watch and not watch what you don't want to watch. She put it behind a paid wall. It seems to me more people are upset that she put it behind a paid wall to limit the access to it. Straw man. That's not why people are upset, dummy. I sped her up. Glad I've heard of her chipmunk voice chick. Yeah, I sped her. I speed her up about 20%. I, I can't listen to her at regular speed. <laughs> I cannot. But yeah, like, sorry. But no, people are not sitting around saying, gosh darn it, Zav Girl has a Patreon with a payroll. That's not why people are upset. They're upset about the things I've said earlier. 
which is what the community out here, true crime, is saying, oh, well, well, oh, 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 she shouldn't have showed it. She didn't show it to the general public. Wow. Um, you know, the internet is also the internet. There's no such thing as private on the internet, Betty. Hmm. And if it was so private, explain to me why Natasha Cooper all of a sudden had the photos and was doing it over there on her channel. Huh? Right. Complete lack of self-awareness is as hilarious as it's, uh, right. I agree. Somebody else said something. It was, if it was men paying to gawk and comment at a young girl's dead body, she'd have a different tune yet because it's a little boy. Great point. 100%. She hates men. And if it was a man who was doing this to a small female child, she would have something to say about it. Highly doubt Innocence Project would ever approve of release of autopsy photos of a non-appellate purpose for profit private gains. Uh, completely agree. Completely agree. Um, she did not show it to the general public. She just charged admission like a perverted carnival barker. Hmm. I tend to agree. Our Azrael, member for 14 months. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what is worse. The fact that she put it behind a paywall and was like, hey, give me money and I'll show you pictures of an unblurred picture. Like, that's fucking disgusting. Uh, Rahana, thank you so much. I'm sitting here listening to her lay out a beautiful counterclaim. You have the right to speak your mind. Others have the right to watch or not, <laughs> right? I'm telling you, Betty. I See, I knew Betty was going to do this. I knew it. And you know what? I guarantee she spent hundreds of dollars acquiring that file. So, hundreds of dollars. So here's the thing. Again, nothing wrong with getting a FOIA request. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. That's not the argument here. Are you going to tell me that out of all the stuff that she got when she ordered that packet, that she couldn't have left out the pictures of the child, especially the ones that were unblurred? Are you telling me that there was just nothing scientific in that packet that she wanted to go over without showing the unblurred picture? I'm, I had X for doubt on that. I think that there was plenty of content that she could have used if she really wanted to do a, quote, scientific uh, presentation. But I'm sorry, but somebody making her own Patreons making jokes about a child's private parts is not anywhere near scientific. You have no right to tell her what she can do with her money or what she can do with her content. Again, it's not a popular statement. It's not a popular stance, but it's realistic and it's the reality, okay? It's the reality. I don't sit here and tell you, my audience, things you want to hear. It'd be so much easier, right? To pander to your likes, right? That's not what we're here for. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Thank you, isolationist. Hold on one second. Let me get to it. Uh, for iconic, ironic coming from what about the children crowd? Right. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Um, what about Betty's crusade? And fundraiser where she's like, give me money and I'm going to go to D.C. for the children. And she's just going to, you know, rally around whatever and do things for the children. And here she's advocating for someone to exploit a child. OK, all right. We're here for the truth and the truth hurts and it sucks. And that's it. She had a right to do it. She did it. There are some people upset about it. I guarantee the people that went in there and watched it were probably educated. What does that have? Okay. So because someone paid $3 to satisfy their morbid curiosity, that equates to educated? Uh, no, that doesn't even make sense. I'm sorry, it doesn't. 
And I will also say this. And I mean it. I think that if these people that she's claiming are so educated were actually in there, getting some sort of whatever out of looking at this child's body like that, making jokes like that, would their employer be okay with that? I don't think so. I don't think that it was people who were educated, as she says. I think that it was just people who were bored, who wanted some kind of entertainment. And they view all of this as entertainment. Our Asriel, thank you so much. This is sick, like Cyrax sick. It really is. It really is. Um, what did she think would be in there that was not presented to the jury? If this was for education, she would have reviewed the trial and the medical examiner's testimony. Right. It doesn't seem to be what they're claiming it to be, huh? The truth is this was morally wrong. It's that is, that's all in my opinion. I agree. I agree. And I don't think that born Betty, like she's trying so hard to spin this to defend Zab girl. And it's just, it's going to be, there's going to be some negative consequences to, to Betty on a number of fronts, because once you start defending that kind of behavior, I mean, the internet's going to do what it's going to do. You know what I'm saying? It happens to literally anyone that gets on here and defends that kind of behavior. And then the fact that she's saying all this stuff that's going to hurt her in court. I just love that for her. Love that for her. Just Larry, thank you so much. But YouTube and Patreon are private companies that can delete your, your scummy accounts for any reason at any time. So we need to put the pressure on them. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, she's already lost her Patreon. It is gone. And I hope that she doesn't get it back because that was pretty messed up. Something doesn't have to be illegal for it to be immoral and wrong. I completely agree. Completely agree. And if this was something that Bullhorn Betty thought was morally wrong, she would 100% use the opposite argument here. And we're able to see what truly happened to that little boy. And if that's what they choose to do, that's their choice. Let's not forget we, we are American citizens, right? And we do have a right to choose for ourselves. Now, I'm not a, a fan of Zap Girl. I don't watch her. I'm not here to, um, you know, have her back, you know, take her six, you know, but cover her six. But that's literally what this is, Betty. You're sitting here defending her and defending what she allowed in her Patreon or anything like that. That's not what I'm here for. I don't, I don't know her. I, I could care less. I have no dog in the fight. None. None. She's not, and quite frankly, in all reality, no offense to Zab Girl, but when I've watched her in the past, she bores me. Oh. That's why I don't watch her. <laughs> she bores me. She puts me to sleep. Oh, Betty. Betty. Okay. Okay. Because it's interesting because she says one thing on here. And then when she starts talking to Zab girl in the comments, which we're going to look at right now or after this, um, it's a completely different story. She's 100% saying, oh, Zab girl can be my next MGL. Mythical Magnolias. Thank you. Welcome to the dumpster fire. Uh, my question is, why was the real reason? What was the real reason? Zab girl in her... KR coverage went Kylie. Okay. Kylie Rodney coverage went down the conspiracy hall. Does she think she's going to crack some mystery, even though the case is closed? I don't get it. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty interesting how, um, she didn't care about science during the Kylie Rodney case. There was no science to be had. The math wasn't math in. And now all of a sudden she wants to be scientific. I'm, I'm sorry, but <laughs> Um, I don't believe you. Um, I'm tired of people using edu education purposes as an umbrella term for it's okay to re-victimize victims of crimes. I completely agree. Completely agree. So that's why, you know, but it doesn't change the fact that, you know, right is right and wrong is wrong. Fair is fair. I understand there are emotional people on here. Listen, you guys are watching true crime. Okay, I don't know how to make that make sense to you. 
you guys are here watching true crime. Okay? There's going to be a lot of disturbing details in true crime. Period. The thing is, is that the comments that were being made, Betty, it goes beyond just covering the case. We are talking about people making a deceased child's body into a joke. That has nothing to do with covering the case. And there is nothing that's going to convince me that that was the right thing to do. And for many people that can't handle maybe true crime, even if you're a true crime junkie, if you can't handle looking at an autopsy uh, report or autopsy photos, then maybe you just need to go to the channels that do commentary. But the channels that actually investigate these cases, we have to look at these autopsy reports. You can't, how are you going to, like, I don't get it. Do you think that we're all just knowledgeable here and that we can just pull all this stuff out without reviewing anything? No, you just steal other people's research. You just print out FBI statistics and uh, print other people's tweets out and then you read it out loud and you call it content. That's what you do. But somebody was asking about Bullhorn Betty. No, Bullhorn Betty did not lose her Patreon. It was Zab Girl and Natasha Cooper that lost their Patreon today. Betty still has hers. She's, as far as I know, hasn't even done anything with it. Uh, J-Dub, remember for 19 months. Thank you so much. She's so ignorant, in my opinion. I knew she would condone it. Of course she would. Betty sees dollar signs in this. She 100% does. She got more views today in that stream than she's had in a while. Like more live viewers than she's had in a while. And you know for a fact that Zab Girl's probably going to give her a shout out. And she's going to get more views and because that's what she's looking for. She's 100% doing this to Cloud Chase. So of what? Of course, she's going to agree that it's right. She doesn't give a shit. Every time we turn around, everybody on the internet wants receipts. Then when you proffer receipts, you want to complain about it. I'm not an emotional person when it comes to YouTube, okay? I'm not an emotional person. And, and that's why when people say stuff and, 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 and I do stuff, I, I, I'm not an emotional person on here. So trying to pander to my emotions not, is not going to really work on YouTube. I'm so glad you said that, Betty. Ugh. I, I just love the fact that every single day you are tearing apart your own case. Love that for you. You know, because this is, it, it's nothing personal. It's nothing personal. It's nothing personal. Okay. Keep that same energy, Betty. And so I just think that, you know, and, and granted, people are going to say, well, it's personal to these families. Right. But this is public record. Here's the thing. Um, who was the person? I would like to know. Who was the person that said, you know what? I don't believe that this child is dead. I don't believe that his body looks the way that it does. I want to see the proof. Who was the person that asked that? That would be nobody. So... What receipts were people asking for that made Zap Girl say, you know what, guys? I, I have the receipts. Here's the here's photo. Let's make jokes about his body. This is out there. Anybody can, can acquire it. Anybody. So don't be beating up the people that actually do the work to get the get the stuff. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. Okay. Um, I see your question. Where is it? Okay, sorry. Chat's going pretty fast. Let me grab that for you. There you go. She is digging her own grave, and I'm here for it. Same. <laughs> Same. Absolutely. You know, it's funny because family court is all private. And so what happens to their privacy, once they die, they're just allowed to be put on the internet on a slab of nude. Court records are sealed. Yeah, see, I don't understand why it was even allowed to be given out. Because again, Bullhorn Betty's an idiot. This was not a FOIA request. It was a court records request. And it is apparently two different things. So, um, yeah. Apparently there were, there was an attorney that called and let them know what was happening and uh, they're not happy about it. So I'm, I'm hoping that this brings some kind of change because it is one thing to get autopsy records of an adult. It is another 
when you're talking about a minor child, okay? That's why a lot of times when it, in cases involving minor children, things get sealed. So I don't, I don't understand why these people can't understand that. Does Betty not understand the internet exists outside of the United States? Um, I'm starting to wonder. Thank you, uh, Rowena. Sud Pucker, setting your name in, I think. Welcome to the dumpster fire. I appreciate that. She's not only she's not the only creator digging her grave. Uh, that is correct, Peggy. Yep. Uh, our Asriel, thank you so much. I guess she doesn't believe in the Fifth Amendment. Apparently not. She's long past that. <laughs> long past that. That's my that's 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 my stance. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. But this petty. Irrational. I'm going to take your channel garbage. It's got to stop on here. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. Move on. Go find another channel that you can uh, you can uh, you can find that, that meets your needs. Zab Girl doesn't meet my needs. I don't watch her. Right? All right. Enough with that. I, I think I've made my stance uh, pretty clear on how I feel about that. Do I think, do, do I, do I frown upon it? I, I probably would. It would probably be disturbing to me. Okay. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand. It would probably be disturbing. Okay. Wow. I'm so glad that you cleared this up for us, Betty. Where I'm, where I'm at here. But right is right and wrong is wrong. And at the end of the day, she did nothing wrong. She did nothing unlawful. And uh, quite frankly, I think people are getting way over emotional for this. Oh. Um, it's your choice. Don't watch it. Watch it. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah, I love I love how she said that. Uh, reiterates, again, further making it easier uh, for Queen's defense. I love that. Rachel Wolf, member for three months. Thank you so much. Um, who the fuck even asked you? She's delusional. She's very delusional. And, uh, this is what happened. Yeah. So then later, let's see. Zab girl posted a comment. This was on, this was underneath the video that we just watched. Zab girl says, thank you, Betty. I really appreciate the stuff you said. You said it be way better than I could say, ever say it because I'm not the best with my words. <laughs> okay. Wow. Shocking. Thank you for standing up for what is right rather than what people want to hear. You and Lar are the only two creators that have stuck up for what I did. Mm, shocker again. It means a lot because I understand you have no dog in the fight, yet you stood up for the truth. And I respect that so much. And Betty hearted it. Bromance. Totally see a bromance happening here. Uh, let's see. There was this going on. This comment, uh, this part, Kathy says there's no, there was no education in what Zav girl did. It was just gross. She zoomed in on the private parts. She was chatting with her subs about his thing. Come on. Even you have to see what she did was for nothing but money and views. She went beyond sharing. Wow. So Zav girl, you zoomed in on it, huh? Did you? Did you do that? Wow. I would love to know what scientific education you learned from doing that. Oh, but wait. I thought you said in your community tab post that you didn't do that because everything was blurred. Oh, okay. So um, <clears throat> you go down and Zab girl goes, OMG, I did not chat about his PP. Pee -pee. Are you serious? That's a lie. And you could not see his private parts in my video. That is a downright lie. So please stop spreading lies. Yeah. Um, Zab girl, again, there's multiple people that are saying they saw that there were multiple pictures. Some of them were fully blurred. Some of them were not. This never ends. Kay and, Mar My Kay and Molly are gone, but others keep popping up. <clears throat> you can make a career out of this. Oh my gosh. No, <laughs> no, this will forever still be my hobby for real. I could not do this full time. I would go nuts. Kay, we remember for two months. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I clearly remember Betty ranting about how tragic it was that the jurors were subjected to such gruesome images during the trial but if you're an a-hole on YouTube, sharing it is all good. I just love the double standard here. Just love it. Then Zab Girl says here, the ones that weren't blurred, you couldn't see his genitals. I'm sorry, that is not true. 
Wait, Zap Girl, I thought you said that none of them were blurred. Now here it is one comment down. You're saying that some were not blurred. That's kind of like you're a liar. And then uh, she says, I didn't zoom in. That is a lie going around because another creator said that, but not true. Hmm. Okay. She's saying it's not true. All right. Then there was this comment. Um, this person says, is that girl exactly these accusations are coming from people who haven't actually seen them. That is false because the people that are saying these things are the people that actually saw what they said they saw. Bullhorn Betty responds, quote, I never thought you did. I actually confirmed you didn't. I couldn't imagine why you would. This too shall pass. In a couple of weeks, they will hate someone else, dot, 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 LOL, most likely me, laughing face emoji. I have to be honest, I'm a little happy it's someone besides me. Don't let them bully you. Your viewer, have your viewer, your, I'm assuming she means your viewers, have a right to see, and I believe you did it in the correct way. Angry people always need something to be angry and outraged with. Take care. And don't change who you are. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Why would someone make that comment, that disgusting comment? Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand that. Like, why is it that that's where your brain went immediately? You know, I always wonder about that. Like, why was that where your brain went? You, you got something to share? I'm wondering. The reach is out of this. The reach of this is immeasurable. Screenshots are free and travel fast. The internet is forever. A paywall doesn't stop it from being shared. Betty knows, i.e. her no pants dance with PD. That's correct. It's a child. I, I, I agree. Completely agree. Wow. So I wanted to share those with you. Lady Pants, thank you so much. Gannon's parents, grandparents, siblings may inadvertently come across those photos online. This has long lasting consequences in my opinion. Yes. Um, un unfortunately, I have heard today that the family is aware that this is happening. I mean, I read to you the comment that the Nana posted publicly. They're devastated all over again. And it is also my understanding that Gannon has a sibling who is now going to have to deal with the fact that um, this is out there. So, right. It seems like the line just keeps getting lowered and lowered. It does, doesn't it? Just when you think that these people can get just more fucked up, they do more fucked up things. He has two siblings. <sighs> wow. Wow. Okay. Well, um, so that is my opinion on all that. And I'm going to move on to what she said, what Bullhorn Betty said to, uh, on the 7th dealing with some other stuff. Um, I'm very interested in hearing what you guys have to say um, in the chat. Feel free to continue to discuss it and also in the comments after the stream is over. I mean, it's just like, just the, just the lack of empathy for what the family is going through. It flies in the face of these people claiming to be victims advocate. And that's what I keep going back to every single time is that Bullhorn Betty claims she has based her whole media company, her brand on the fact that she is a victim's advocate. And then she's doing things like this or endorsing other people doing things like this. So I'm sorry, but no, no, I don't, I don't believe that you are a victim's advocate. If you think that something like this is okay. And she speaks about emotions as if it's some, uh, 
evil thing. It's not. To be over-emotional, which she tends to be in these cases, is a bad thing, in my opinion. But to have some sort of emotion to the pla- to the point where you actually able to realize that these people are human beings, this is their family, and what you did was wrong. That's the part that I, I can't... I can't understand and wrap my brain around someone who doesn't get that. But the bottom line is Patreon determined that it was against their terms of service. They took Zab Girl's Patreon down. I hope she does not get it back. And I hope this family um, sues the fuck out of her. 100%. Because that was just wrong. Bacon! Right? What a shake and bake it. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy YouTubing today. Happy TGIF. Happy whatever you need it to be. Happy summer break. Happy we don't have to get the kids up at the crack of dawn. Laura screamed and cried when Jim Terry said he was going to post her baby daddy. So not for thee and not for, yeah, rules for thee and not for me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anything about Jim Terry, but I heard that he, that it's probably a good thing that he is not online anymore. Well, right. Empathy is a functional to human functioning, right? And you cannot be an advocate unless you have empathy. You, it's just, that's impossible. So this is what she did on the 7th. <laughs> Betty thinks that it's summertime, therefore people who have children can just sleep in and drink coffee on the porch, and the kids are just going to, I don't know, raise themselves. Not sure. Happy, 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 joy, joy. Eh, maybe not so much, right? Maybe not so much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We are here. We are up. We are live. We are happy. It is Friday, and we are even more happy that tomorrow is Saturday. <laughs> Let's be honest. Today is the teaser, right? We get to Friday, and we're like, it's the weekend. But it's not. We still have to go through a whole day of work, right? Except you, who doesn't have a job. I totally admire the fact that she can get her hair that high. Don't know how she does it. And if you're Bullhorn Betty, or Andra, or a third person out there that tries to trigger people, you might be a little upset that you got to work tomorrow. The problem is with me, I enjoy my job, right? I get to meet great people. I get to hang out with a bunch of fun, crazy people like me. Okay, that's what I thought you said. Perhaps negligent infliction of emotional distress depending on jurisdiction. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, I have said this before and I'll say it again. Until some of these families, and I, I don't, I'm not saying this in a disrespectful way, so please... Please hear me on this. But I think that until some of these families actually say, you know what, we're, we're, we're done with people exploiting my child's death or my loved one's death, and they start fighting back legally against some of these channels who are exploiting them. What did the chief of police in uh, Chatham County, uh, Georgia say? He called it a money-making circus. So perfectly named. But I think that in, until some of these families say, you know what, enough is enough, and they start legally going after these cases that are these channels that are making their loved ones missing or murdered case into a money making circus, these channels are not going to stop. YouTube is not going to take them down unless they're breaking terms of service. But I guarantee you that if some of these families start suing these YouTubers, which they have started to do, we have what a uh, critical Karen or whatever her name is. She got sued. She's gone. You know, there's a lot of people that are getting in trouble now and losing their Patreon, losing their channel over this shit. And I think that's a good thing because, you know, again, you that you can point to so many great true crime channels out there that have millions and millions of subscribers, millions of views. They do very, very well. They're highly respected. They do a great job. They're, they don't have to do all of this tomfoolery to get the views and the money. 
So then I'm like, okay, well, if you don't have to do all of that to be successful on here, then why did they think that they have to do it? Answer is, I think, in my opinion, they want to do the fuck shit. They like it. They want to do it. Because if they really were about, oh, we're, we need to do this to make our channel successful, uh, they wouldn't be doing all of this stuff because it only hurts them in the end. Thank you, Heels in the Air. Nobody does a better great show. Thank you. I appreciate that. Stella, Bella, gifted 10 memberships. Thank you so much. Don, Sean, Much Endeavors, Queen Bella, My Opinions, Grain, Rongo, Google is watching, crocheting, heart shape box. Congratulations. Thank you. And welcome to the dumpster fire. Do you know what Patreon's POV or determination title on why Zav channel was terminated? I do not know. All I know is that when you click on her Patreon link, it just says page was removed. So that I, I don't know. I'm not sure. YouTube has some accountability as well, in my opinion. They also need to step up and put an end to these channels, update the terms of service, what good. There, there's good true crime, and then there's true grime. I agree. But, I mean, we know how YouTube works. I mean, <laughs> YouTube doesn't care unless there's a major stink. So, that's unfortunate. I hope those families know that if they choose to fight against these terrible channels, there, there would have they would have so much support. Oh, completely agree. I would absolutely support them as well. And we get to talk about something that I'm interested in, right? Like true crime. I've been interested in, as many of us have been interested in true crime for many, many years. I'm sure before even true crime, uh, you know, movies came on TV, there was true crime junkies, right? There's true crime junkies. We're intrigued. We're intrigued by the unknown or the reason or the why because, you know, now granted, normal is a subjective. Granted. <laughs> Again, Betty, granite is what you have on your countertops in your kitchen, sometimes bathroom. Granted is what you're looking for here. Statement, right? What is normal? It's subjective. But I have to think that even us crazy normal people, <laughs> a slightly unnormal normal people, we don't go out murdering a bunch of people. We don't go out doing crazy stuff. So a lot of these oh. cases intrigue us because we just don't get it, right? Betty, I don't think that you're the right person to be saying something like that. I mean, you have done crazy things, <laughs> according to your record. Um, okay. I mean, that's really what it is. We don't understand. We don't understand how, say, a mother could keep a son captive for eight years, right? We don't understand those things. We as human normals, the subjective normal, us subjectively normal people. Um, okay, is subjective like her new word of the day? Did somebody teach her that word? She's going to be saying it in every sentence now. You know, don't understand. So it intrigues us. And we like to look under the hood because we're kind of like cats, right? You know, curiosity killed the cat. We're cats, okay? Meow. We're curious, right? We're curious. So good morning, Southern Grammy Wolf. Good morning, good morning. The Real Me Too, followed by Sonia, Lady 7 Up. And we're just going to call her Slim, okay? Because she's not Slim Shady. She's Slim Skittles. And, and not only that, she's the real Slim Skittles, right? Okay. Pack your bags, folks. About to go on a, a cringe trip, and it's, uh, you're going to get secondhand embarrassment. Right? But we're just going to call her Slim because she doesn't know what her name is anymore, right? She doesn't know whether she wants to go with The Real, whether she wants to go with Slim, or whether she wants to go with Skittles and taste the rainbow, right? Are we ready to taste the rainbow? No, we're not. So we're just going to call her Slim. So Slim Skittles, good morning. I, I don't I don't get it. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I see you. I'm always curious about how many people are in her chat. Oh, this particular stream that she did on the 7th, which was Friday, I think there was like a hundred and something in her chat, maybe 200 at one point. The one that she did defending Zap Girl, she got almost 300 people. So, yeah. You'll notice that when she goes out and actually screams and yells and heckles and is like a Karen in the middle of the street with her bullhorn, those are the streams where she gets, you know, 
like I've seen her have 2000 people in her chat when she does things like that. But when she sits at home and just does this, she doesn't really get as many views as she does when she goes out with her bullhorn. And it's like, yeah, she wants to blame everybody else for why her channel isn't doing well right now. And in reality is she had people subscribe to her channel because they thought that she was this bullhorn lady who was going to go out and do this every time. And she just doesn't do it anymore. So that's partly, I believe, why she doesn't have as many views. <laughs> yeah, Lusty. Okay. Um, she can she can go do that. <laughs> nice to see you. So I think we got through just about everybody. But uh, if we didn't, big blanket hello from the Bullhorn Betty channel to each and every one of you. Uh, hopefully you guys are having, you know, when it's summer break for the children, hopefully you're getting a small little break too, right? No, <laughs> that is not how that works. Okay, that that's, no. People work during the summer, you know that, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, up, maybe, Ella? maybe not. Pussycat, it's nice to see you. But you, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes it, it is like you're not having to do the hustle and bustle in the morning. But you know what? You got to come home at, in the afternoon, right? You got to come home from work. And typically when you come from from work, the teenage kids have destroyed the house. Okay. So this is one of the reasons why I have this in here for today. She says some stuff that's really messed up. Again, right on the heels of what she just said pertaining to Zab Girl and pictures of that kid. So here she is talking about children again. And it is bizarre. So the first 45 minutes to an hour, you're grumpy as heck. Yeah, cleaning up all the crap that's been left there because your kids are slops. Okay? Let me give you a... I love you parents. Parents, you guys are great parents. Don't kill the kids this summer, okay? I Apparently, that's what we're joking about now. I, I just... I don't... She is so... Yeah. Also, Betty, my kids are amazing. So you don't you don't speak for my children or for anybody else's children. My children are not slobs. They're actually smarter than you are. I know you want to pop their little heads off like pimples, but you know what? Make a list. Give them chores. <laughs> Take their electronics away until the chores are done. We got this, right? We got this. And that's she really is delicate. She's so tone deaf. She really is. She has no, like, she doesn't know how to read a room <laughs> at all. Pro, good morning. Good morning. We got this, right? You take the electronics away. You don't even have to take them away for very long, right? You can tell them, I'm taking it away for my week. Get this 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 garbage out. Clean your room. Scrub the bathroom. And when it's done, you get it back to it. They seem to have our time. Don't get your phones and stuff taken away from you. Just do the work that you need to do, right? Kids have got to be responsible. So make your kids responsible. I'm so glad she doesn't have children. I mean, I'm just I'm just being real. Like the time, the decades that she would have been having children, she was in and out of getting in trouble with the law. And CPS would have been involved and it would have been a nightmare for those kids. And then to hear the way that she speaks, not just in this stream, but in past streams as well, how she has spoken about children is rather alarming to me. <laughs> I'll tell you the trick. Okay. I'll tell you the trick. All the kids, all the teenage kids that are watching this show, here's the trick. Okay. This is, this is how Bullhorn Betty cleaned her room when Mama Bullhorn was on her butt, right? Does she know that children aren't allowed on YouTube? Like, what I'm saying is, like, you can't have a YouTube account till you're, what, 13? Why she thinks children are watching her channel is insanity to me. What you do is you grab everything, put it in a pile on top of the bed, okay? Get on your knees on the floor, okay? Lift the duff, dust ruffler of your bed and take the stuff on the top of your bed and put it under the bed and shove. That's all you have to do. Mama's happy, right? Mama's happy until she cleans under your bed. Then she's not so happy. But it'll get you some time, okay? And your electronics won't go away. <laughs> that is so weird. All right. Now that I've got to go in hiding, <laughs> because moms are ready to uh, come hunt me down. <laughs> all right. We're done. We're done. So just before we get started on the Rudy case, I <laughs> great advice. I know many moms out there are probably saying, I hate Bullhorn Betty right now. I bet, I bet you there's a lot of moms going out there looking up under their kids', their kids bed now saying, how much crap did they shove up under here? I mean, you said vape break. <laughs> but guys, she doesn't use chemicals. <laughs> but she vapes. Trust me, there's more of me around. You just don't know it yet. 
You just don't know it. Talk to Mama Bullhorn. She'll tell you the tricks. <laughs> mm, okay. Hard pass. Now, on a not-so-funny note, uh, we're going to just touch base on uh, Winter Smith again. Um, this is a very hard – when it comes to these little kids, it's very hard for me. Um, I know that, you know, and I'm sure it's probably hard. <laughs> There's no chemicals inside your body, Toasty. What are you talking about? Right. Like, that was so funny when she was like, our bodies don't know what to do with chemicals. And I'm like, your body has like 83 chemicals in your body that helps you stay alive. But okay. For you guys too. But it's it's ultra sensitive. It's a sensitive topic for me when it comes to these young children. Um and oh, now she's for protecting the children again. All right. My heart breaks because I her heart breaks, guys, but she does not get emotional. No emotions. Okay. I feel like some of these children have such a gift to this world and they were snuffed away because they were born to the wrong parents. And, you know, those, those, I just, it's just sad. Like I almost could accept and, and this is, you know, I, get, I say things and people take it and, and spin it. And I, I, at this point, don't really care. I mean, they spin everything. I can, it doesn't matter what I say, right? And it'll be spun negatively. And, and, and everything I say is taken out of context. Yeah, see, I don't, like, you keep saying that, but I'm playing you in your own words. I'm playing large, large clips of your live streams. People are not stupid. They can hear you and then make up their own mind. What is happening is that you're upset that it seems like a lot of people are coming to the same conclusion. Um, but I am going to say it just the way it is because I'm just going to be me and there's no other person to be but me. And sometimes I think, say things that, um, you know, people are thinking but refuse to say, you know. Um, and I'm just a, a realist type of person. I don't really care about PC. I don't care about the PC culture. I don't. So when she says things like this, she's amping herself up to say something really, really fucked up. I don't care about, um, you know, getting, you know, I'm not going to stand on a, a hill and, and fall on the sword on some of these causes, but uh, for oh, the most part, right. I'm not going to change who I am. Yeah, yeah. She's not going to sacrifice her, her own happiness for these causes, guys. Okay. She's just doing it for her YouTube channel. And at the end of the day, I can accept a grandparent being, you know, or a parent being, I can accept it a lot more. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't know what it is about my brain or my personality or the chemical makeup of my body. But for whatever reason, it's a little more palatable for me to deal with when it's an adult. Okay. Uh, she still has not learned the definition of palatable. Okay, Betty, that's, that is not the right word to say that. That's pretty gross. I don't think that she even comprehends how disgusting it is to use that word in the subject that she's talking about right now, but okay. When it comes to these children, it's a very sensitive topic, a very sensitive topic. One, uh, when I got into this business, I never thought I would be covering children. So, you know, I was covering, um, you know, domestic violence and the abuses of homes and, and advocating against domestic violence. I never in a million years, you know, when Summer Wells came, I thought that was a fluke. I thought that was going to be a one and done situation. Wait a second, Betty. So you think that we should all be sensitive to what the child needs and the family needs pertaining to the child's case, but you just said then three days later something different, that we need to take our emotions out of it, and who cares? It's just the case is the case is the case. Hmm, okay. That, you know, the, these these children, you know, because we all, I mean, I, I'm not stupid. I mean, we've been out I growing mean, up. I, I remember being at a, um, a a condo, you know, a condo. And, and uh, it was one of our beach condos that we had. And we went to every summer in wow. Fort Myers. And I remember we were running around the big pool that they had. And one of the girls slipped and busted her head. Like she had blood coming out of her. Every single person just ran to her aid, you know, corralled around her, you know, really tried to help her. And because that's what basic decent human beings do. And, and that's the beauty I see out there. You know, everybody protecting the young, everybody running to the aid of a child when a child is in need. It didn't matter whether that child was their child or not. They saw a child injured and it was, it was, it was almost a compulsion. And, you know, you're compelled to, to help. You, 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 you don't even think about it. You are, you just, it, it's just, instinctually you run to the threat you run to the person injured not the threat the injured person and you render aid now if it was somebody if it was an older person do you think that many people would have ran to that per that person no i don't believe it would have wow well um i disagree because i have seen situations where an adult 
or an elderly person falls and people do walk over to them and help them up. I, 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 what planet are you from? But because it was a young child, she slipped, she busted her head. There's blood coming out. Everybody corralled around. Everybody. When it comes to our- No, I see you, Patricia. You're not hidden. Our kids. It doesn't matter who they belong to. We protect our young in this country. Naturally, instinctually. We don't think about it when we jump into action. We just jump into action. Except for when you're going to make money defending Zab Girl and doing what she did, right? Okay. So when it comes to these children, for me, it is a hard pill to swallow that we, I have grandchildren. I don't have live, I, I don't have my own children. I have grandchildren. I have stepchildren. I don't have my own children. And that never has ever played in, in, in my equation at all. Those are my kids. Those are my grandkids. Okay. To be clear, because she keeps being very dishonest about this subject. She keeps changing the story every time she tells it. Here are the facts. Okay. She was like 30 two or 33 when she married her now ex-husband he is considerably older than her like by like more than a decade i believe he's between 12 and 15 years older than her by the time she married him his three children were grown and moved out she did not have a parent child relationship as far as like raising them and changing diapers and all of that. They were grown, some of them having children of their own by the time she even met her husband, okay? So his kids had kids. And then 10 years later, because she's been very public about this, she even streamed her ex-husband on her channel talking about the day they got divorced. They were divorced 10 years later. So then at 42... They were divorced. I believe it was 42 or 41 or something. They were divorced. And so, right. So that's the situation. Okay. So she likes to act like first she'll be like, oh, I have children. And she'll talk about her children. And then later when people called her out, she's like, oh, I don't have kids. I have stepkids. But then she made it seem like that she had kind of raised them. And then when they found out, people found out that they were actually grown and already moved out by the time she even married their father then it's a, com it's a completely different relationship there. I'm not downplaying the fact that she was a stepmom for 10 years to grown children, but to be a stepmom to grown children who already live on their own is entirely different than being a stepmom to children that you are raising. That is, that is the truth of the matter. Okay. So I just, I had to say that because she continues to lie about this subject and it, it, the story changes depending on who she's talking to and what point she wants to make. There's never once that I say, I'm not bi biologically related to you. I'm not going to help you. Right? And so why am I saying all this and giving such a lecture on this? Because our young are need to be protected. And they need to be protected sometimes from their own parents. And both of these cases, um, and, and, and parental figures, because we, we do know Winter, the, the, the man that killed Winter was not her father. Uh, oh, you just figured that out. So glad for you. Um, it was a, a the father of her brother, from my understanding. Uh, apparently, with Winter, she was with the guy that, that killed her daughter. She was with him. And uh, whether she broke up with him and had another relationship with another person, or she had an affair on him and, and got pregnant... Um, we don't know those fine details, but they wow. did have a relationship and she does have. I love how she just throws in shit like that. She has no idea what she's talking about. An older son with this man. It sounds like this was a hostile, jealous situation. He never came to terms with the fact that she left him and, and, and had another kid by another man. This is what I truly believe happened. But again, this was not the child's fault. This was never the child's fault. This is not something that the child did. The child had no choice with who her mother laid down with. Nobody's saying it's the child's fault, Betty. What? She she does this a lot. She just like makes up arguments that nobody's making and then bitches about it. Children need to be protected except for after they're deceased, apparently. Apparently. Uh, apparently. I can tell you that she was a gift from God. She was beautiful. She looked like she had everything going her way. Her mother left that man. Her mother wanted a fresh start, obviously. Again, a lot of passion Jeffrey's um case just resonates with this one i identify this case because of ash and jeffries and what her and her son had to go through what and god rest their souls 
the cases are not alike at all. Wow. Okay. Thank God this mother is able to live and care for her son, but she is forever going to be scarred so deeply that many of us will never, ever understand. She was stabbed. She had to run for her life. She had to go try to get help. And can you imagine her just trying to save herself and the, the guilt she she didn't do anything wrong. I mean, let me put that out there. She didn't do anything wrong. She was assaulted and was trying to save her life. I don't think at any point she ever even thought that her daughter was in danger. I mean, I don't know about that, Betty. And you can't just, again, she's spe wildly speculating here. Maybe, Rowdy, <laughs> Roddy, <laughs> maybe so. BHB is exactly why I couldn't wait to move from Florida after college. Yikes. Yeah. See, the thing is, is that I understand Betty's pattern. And even though she's saying right now that it's not the mom's fault and that she doesn't blame the mom at all for running away and saving her life, I have seen many, many, many cases where Betty starts off saying, oh, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. They did the best they could. Um, and then in the end, when the content starts drying up, then it's um, the victim blaming starts. I mean, she's she did that in the Idaho 4 case. She's done that in multiple other cases. And I'm just I'm just seeing the red flags once again, where give it a couple of months. And if she decides to get back on this case again, it's going to be, oh, the mother, the mother, you know, why did she leave her daughter there? Blah, 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 blah but she needed to save herself. Can you imagine? She did nothing wrong. And she's going to have to live with herself in the guilt that she's going to feel because she is going to feel, no matter how you look at this, whether she was right, wrong, or indifferent, or how you feel about the mom running out of the house to save her life. Uh, when you're being stabbed and you need to, to, to run and save your life, you don't have the option to walk past your, your assailant and grab your child. You don't have that option. You have to save your life. You have to get out of there or you will die. See, again, exactly, um, exactly. She throws in those little passive aggressive digs, a fair question mark. Well, right. <laughs> that, that's what I'm talking about. It's just these little tiny digs where you can tell that she sort of has, has sticks her foot in the door so that just in case she needs to switch to a different side or different argument or different angle, she can do that. And she had to run. And she is going to forever feel the guilt of leaving her baby girl behind and she did nothing wrong, nothing. And she's going to be scarred from that. And and people and, and, and we all know she did nothing wrong. And even in her brain, even in her own mind, she's going to know in her heart and her soul, she did everything right. And she's still going to blame herself for her daughter. What is she trying to explain? Uh, this is fear porn. This is what she does on her channel on a quite frequent basis. She goes off on these weird tangents that are not based in reality at all. A lot of times it's flat out misinformation and she, she tries to sound like that she's defending the victim, but in reality, it comes across that she's blaming the victim. It's very strange. This is a pain that, that nobody can describe, that nobody can own. This is something that even if you were, were in the exact same position as she was, even if you had the same exact experience, you guys will still have separate scars. So, um, you know, just, this is a sad case, but I do want to just give a little bit of a moment um, to Winter in her case so you guys can be updated on it. I did this as a tip. Um, a lot of people, you know, we are learning as we, oops, we are learning as we're doing this type of work, you know, a lot of uh, details, you know, a lot of details. She gets super racist, really? If I missed it, uh, please give me the timestamps and I will see if I can grab it because I'm interested in hearing that. That we don't really realize. Uh, we all know Big Brother's watching. We all know that when it comes to the FBI and the U.S. Marshals, they have that uh, secret computer that just seems to almost pinpoint our location, right? It only takes them like, it's almost like we have tracking devices in each one of us and it just takes a little bit to find us, right? They push a button and then all of a sudden it goes, woo, 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 and next thing you know, your door's being kicked in, the U.S. Marshals is grabbing your butt and you're head heading off to where you need. And it's funny how they do that, right? Law enforcement doesn't have this secret computer, right? They could be looking for people for years. Call the FBI three days later. We got gotcha. you. We got gotcha. you. Sit back. Here's your tip, right? And they do that and they do it un 
under secrecy. So when we hear. <laughs> oh, Betty. Oh, okay. All right. These, um, like even law enforcement, even these um, uh, trials. When is the last time we've actually seen an FBI agent up on the stand explain, like, you know, law enforcement has to get up there, um, whatever, you know, what were we doing? Just Leticia. So we had um, the Colorado Springs uh, police and we had Florida police and we had South Carolina police all had to be shipped into her trial. But you know what I didn't notice? FBI agents, right? Wait, is she for real sitting here saying that FBI agents never do press conferences, never um, are called as witnesses, never go to a trial? Are you kidding me, Betty? If it's pertinent to the trial, they absolutely will be subpoenaed as a witness. What are you talking about? Thank you, Makeup Mobster. I'm an FBI agent testified in her trial, you moron. I, I don't know what she's talking about. FBI agents don't take the stand, right? They don't take the stand. Yes, they do. Wow. Why? Because they can be cross-examined in their practices. What is the one thing that the FBI does not want disclosed? Their motive of operation. Thank you, Amy. FBI agent testified for a long time in staunch trial. Uh, thank you, Glare. Three FBI agents testified in the very trial she streamed. That I remember. Yes. <laughs> what? Right? They don't want you to know the SOP for the FBI. They don't want you to know their secret sauce and how they're the able to find it. Because, sauce. you know, quite frankly, if we did know the secret sauce, if we did know how they do what they do, it would probably terrify us, right? <laughs> I think if we knew what the FBI did to keep us safe, it would scare the crap out of us, and we would probably shut the FBI down. Let's be honest with you. I mean, this is the person that says that she doesn't do conspiracy theories. This is kind of edging in that direction. Right? If we found out half the crap that they knew about each and every one of us, or had on each and every one of us, or how they tracked it, it would terrify us. Okay, let's be honest. Let's be honest. I can tell you just a little bit that I know, and I know I don't know it all, terrifies me. And I talk about Big Brother all the time. <laughs> Why are you terrified, Betty? What are you hiding? I'm not terrified. If somebody was seek had some secret sauce to spy on my computers, you know what they would find? Nothing. What are you hiding that makes you so terrified that the FBI is going to come knock down your door one day? It's kind of weird, right? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. On this show, right? Because Maybe it's Maybelline. Because they're always watching. And the more we do these criminal cases, the more we realize how much we purchase our own tracking devices, right? We purchase our cars knowing they have OnStar and track our every move. We buy our watches knowing that they're monitoring every single thing. We download Google apps. And all this stuff, knowing that they're um, they're they're mining our data, and we don't care. We give it to them freely because we want not to have to do legwork. We want things to be given to us, simple. We want to be able to go to Google, type in whatever we want, and we want it to pop out an answer. And for that answer, we sell our our privacy to have this luxury of having things at our fingertips. We sell our privacy. We sell ourselves. Didn't one of her citations went on to say she told the police that they were involved. She worked for the FBI. Yes, that is actually true. One of the times, I don't remember which one it is. I will find it if somebody wants it. Contact me. I'll send you the link. But there was one of the times on her record where she was drunk, like wasted drunk. She got pulled over for a DUI. Um, I don't remember if it was because, you know, there's so many. I can't keep track. I don't remember if this is the one that was just the regular police or if it was state police, but they started arresting her and she started screaming in her junk, drunken stupor that basically she was secretly an FBI agent and she was going to have them all, you know, fired from their jobs and they had no idea who she was and she had connections. And yeah, that was absolutely something that she did. Uh, yeah. To these companies, we do it to ourselves. Let's be honest, right? We do do this to ourselves. We know that the government's watching. We know every time we purchase a cell phone, the government is tracking us. We know every time we get an activity watch, it is tracking us. 
We know every time we download an app to our phones, it is tracking us. We know every time we get in the car and go somewhere, it's tracking us. And guess what? When we're watching those things on the internet that we don't want people to know we're watching, somebody's watching. Oh, Betty, you have something to share with the class? Hmm? What are you, what are you worried about? Hmm, that's interesting. Projection much? Right? And let me tell you something else. These cameras are always on, right? These cameras are always on. And we know, like, I keep my uh, my camera here on, in this computer, right? The lid on this computer stays up all day long. Can we FOIA BHB's ass? I mean, feel free to do that. She's the one screaming that boy is for anyone who wants to do that. If uh, if you want to do that, go ahead. I'm not going to waste my time or money doing it. But if somebody else wants to, they are more than welcome to do that. FOIA is available to every citizen um, for whatever is available. Not everything can be foia but if you wanted to do that, knock yourself out. The pause, she looked like Mrs. Claus. <laughs> Mrs. Claus. Oh my God. My somebody behind the scenes could literally be watching every move I make in my home from this computer. Let's you're, be honest. You're not that special, Betty. You're not ourselves. that special. Adults. And this is going to affect this man. I just oh. pray to God he's got. Yeah, she kind of reminds me of a, uh, what do you call them? Sovereign citizens. Not sovereign citizens. Uh, targeted citizens. There's like a whole bunch of people on YouTube that call themselves targeted citizens. And they have that same kind of like flavor i guess to their view of things where they think that the government that they're so special they're so like entitled and famous in i guess everywhere is that the government actually spends time and money and manpower monitoring them 24 hours a day and if that's what she thinks that that is please betty please be a targeted citizen i would love that that new era for your channel. I would love that for you. Paranoid and stupid and dangerous, com a dangerous combo. Yeah, it sure is. Just Larry, thank you so much. God bless the agent tasked with <laughs> watching her cam. Ooh. Yeah, yikes. A great support system uh, that is able to help him in a positive way and not a negative one. I had, when I was, when I was his age, I didn't have much of a support system. Um, my parents tried, but you, you parents, you know, at, at the end of the day, the, where I was at, I was angry with my parents. That's why I was in the situation. Once again, insert vapid locale tragedy vulture who was making this tragedy about her. And that I was in while I was doing the things I was doing. I was hurt. I was, I felt betrayed. There was a lot of emotions that went along with it, that this man is going to go through totally different scenarios, uh, totally different scenarios. But those, those, those certain, um, emotions, you know, are similar, are similar. He has a loss. Uh, a lot of people have experienced a loss, but not a loss of a two-year-old child. Um, and that is just something, like I said, when it comes to these children, these young children, it affects me. It affects me. It affects um, you. That. It, it, is it, does it affect oh, your emotions? Oh, Betty, but I thought you said that you are you don't get emotions and that you're basically a robot on here. And, you know, it doesn't, you don't, you know, take any of this seriously and it doesn't affect you emotionally. And, you know, oh my, oh my God, Betty, are, are you telling me that you're actually emotionally invested? It, 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 it does something to my brain. It, oh. it does something to me when I look at people. Oh. You know, I don't look at people normally anymore. Again, subjective. I mean, <laughs> I believe that. What's normal? Um, I, 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 I'm now, every time I, I go into it, and, and, and it's just been over the last two years, you know, when I see a child, you know, I'm, I'm visually looking at that child from head to toe now to see if there's bruises that shouldn't be on that child, to see if this, the parent's acting right. You know, is the parent yanking them all over the store? Is they cussing at them? You know, I'm looking at them. Do they have the right melanin content? I get what you're saying. Yeah, that's not surprising that you would be an absolute Karen in public watching and staring at other people's children to see if you can report them to CPS. <laughs> this is my shocked face. Like, I, I'm like, that doesn't surprise me at all, Betty. That's pretty on brand for you. Those things now. I never, I never paid attention. I stayed in my own lane. You stayed in your own lane by protesting in front of people's houses. Hmm. Okay. But now, now doing all this, it's so different. Like it, it's like this veil has come off my eyes and I look at people so differently now. 
Um, you know, I, and, and the people that I trust and love, I keep them close, as close as possible because, you know, I, I don't trust anybody anymore. I look at parents with skepticism now. <laughs> like, are you are you taking care of your kid? Like, you know, I almost want to take out a checklist and start going through it and making sure that these children are safe. So uh, Karen confirmed. I mean, <laughs> it's getting that bad. It really is. It really is. So, um, but I did want everybody to see, you know, Winter was found. It's it's sad that, that you know, what has happened to her. Uh, we're definitely going to be praying uh, for her family, her friends, uh, Godly, her mother. Her mother is in the hospital recovering from multiple stab wounds. I, I can't even imagine the terror um, that that mother went through. And I can't imagine waking up to this nightmare. It is just, it's heartbreaking. I, I don't know. But Betty, I thought you said you don't talk about emotions on this platform. Stop talking about emotions. You said that you don't do that. What person doesn't get emotional over oh. this, this Winter Smith case or any child case? Hmm. Okay. It's hard. All this stuff was breaking. Yeah, it is very creepy. It is a lot of red flags. Again, another, okay. It's another red flag involving children. And it's making me very uncomfortable. Like I'm just noticing a pattern here. That's all I'm saying. I mean, who wouldn't want to come and, and break a story that a man has been missing and, and found after eight years? Who wouldn't want? Who wouldn't want that soundbite? Who wouldn't want that clickbait title, right? Um, but I, 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 I'm different. You know, I try to use my common sense, and something just didn't smell right. And because I'm polarized here on YouTube, and, and God forbid I get one detail wrong, you know, I, I, you know, choose to err on the side of caution when covering some of these cases. And so something in my gut was telling me there's there's red flags in this case. We need to um, slow it down. We need to figure it out. We need to get it right. And I'm glad we chose not to go out and wag our fingers at all those naysayers out there about, you know, why we don't, why we continue to hold out hope all these years. Even if everything was true in this case and he truly was gone for eight years, this wouldn't be the standard for our children that are missing in this country. So she switched over to the case of the excuse me, the 25-year-old man who went missing when he was 17 and showed up eight years later, that whole thing. Uh, maybe the part isn't in your clips. Okay, if you can get me the timestamp, I'm very interested in watching that. This would be a considered an outlier. This is this, that, What is an outlier? It doesn't bode with the statistical anomalies. It, it is a statistical anomaly, but it doesn't bode well with the statistics. Our statistics say we have 48 hours to, if our children are missing, we have 48 hours to get them in sight and bring them home. Otherwise, their chances of survival dramatically drop, dramatically. It goes from double percentages to the single percentile after 48 hours, and even worse after 72 hours. These are statistics. That means that this is the majority. This is what typically happens. So even in the case where if, if all were true and he was found eight years later, it would still be one of those uh, one in a million cases. This is not the standard. This is not the standard. Um, you know, what I do like is here's what I've been noticing. And this is a good thing uh, for our causes, right? Because we uh, here on the Bullhorn Betty channel realize that human trafficking and... S oh, for fuck's sake. Flip-flopping with her, I do emotions, I don't do emotions. How about morally, more morality and integrity? Yeah, you noticed how, and this is why I wanted to put, just juxtapose these two different days, the 7th and the 10th, if anything, to show that she will, she will change her narrative, she will change her argument to where it suits her. So in this particular stream, she was trying to appeal to everyone's emotions because she was making very passive aggressive digs at Queen and her lawsuit with Queen, talking about how, you know, she just gets so emotional and people won't leave her alone and blah, 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 blah. And then, of course, she changed to the complete opposite side of that argument on Monday, today, the 10th, because it was advantageous for her to do so in order to defend Zav Girl. So same type of trafficking does exist in this country. And one of the biggest problems I've had for a long time, because I have traveled this country, I have looked into the allegations of SA. And like even with South Carolina, remember we heard that Myrtle Beach, South Carolina was the epicenter of this trade. No, you didn't hear that. One of your dummies in your chat said it, and then you ran with it. There's absolutely nobody on YouTube that was streaming about that. Nobody was making a video saying that. 
Even people that I don't like weren't even saying that. I've never heard anyone say that. There's never been a study that has come out saying that either. It was some rando person in your chat who gassed you up and said, hey, did you know, blah, blah, blah. And then you were like, wow, it's true. And then you ran with it. Rohani Badger, thank you so much. Just saying Bullhorn Betty have blue hairline. <laughs> Just a blue hairline. Well, for now. And then <laughs> the whole roots start showing again. I don't remember ever hearing that. Yeah, no one ever said it except for somebody in her chat. And this happened back in, I believe it was either 2021 or 2022, where she went and did a stream in Myrtle Beach. And she was posting a lot of video of her there getting drunk with her friends. And that's when she had, um, she had like a, I think she went to like a Trump rally, but she had raised money to go to do these cases but then found out later that she had actually gone to a private personal event and used the money for that. And then was like, oh, yeah, I'll post a bunch of videos, posted a few and then didn't post anymore. And that was one of the main times that people started calling her a grifter because she was asking for money for one thing and then using it for something else and then lying about it when she got caught. Well, I went to to Myrtle Beach to investigate. I mean, I had another um you know, event going on there, which put me in the area. But if anybody knows me, if I go anywhere for a personal event, I'm always going to cover a case because there's cases everywhere I go. And so I had an opportunity to go to South Carolina, to Myrtle Beach, and I looked into these allegations and people are saying this is the epicenter. I expect nobody was saying that. Nobody was saying that. To see hundreds of cases, right? Being the epicenter of the United States. So we are hearing at the, at the time. She, what was this like? Wait, she thinks an epicenter would only have hundreds, hundreds of cases? Betty, do you know what epicenter means? A year or two ago. And so I, I found 19 cases. 19. Now, granted, it's 19 cases, 19 victims. But I thought... 19 is the epicenter of the country. So here I am, you know, I'm kind of naive. I'm kind of dumb and ignorant when it comes to the facts of, of this trafficking. The facts of pretty much everything. Yeah. The ep epidemic that's going on in our country. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'm trying to think about this. I'm like, you know, 19 just seems like a low number. Granted, they're all victims. You know, you don't want to downplay it because these are 19 people um, that have, God knows what they've went through, you know? So you you have a sympathetic heart, to the, but you're, you're thinking like, just seems like it should be a lot more than 19 cases. So then, you know, as in, in fact, now that I think about it, there was a stream that I did reviewing the stream where in the stream, somebody was like, oh, I heard blah, blah, blah about Myrtle Beach. And she was like, oh, really? Must be true. And then I remember reviewing it and laughing at her and saying, that's not true. You need to Google this. You need to look it up. It's not true. And then use that as an excuse to go to a political rally. Oh, I, I need to investigate this, guys. It's like, mm, okay, I see what you did. This was, you know, again, a year or so ago. So since then, I've been always asking this question uh, about the numbers associated with our, our this this thing. And every time, every time we have a missing person, we have all these people coming out. Oh, they were sold. They were sold. No, they're not. Most of them are dead. Let's be honest. Most of them are dead. But there is there is a a percentage of those that aren't that were taken that were forced into this trade. And those numbers are not realistic in our country. So I've actually been campaigning, not only here in Manatee County and in the state of Florida, but around this country to get the numbers right. We cannot possibly start fixing a problem when we don't even have the proper data. And so that has been been my 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 drumbeat when it comes to the oh, whole trafficking, drumbeat. whether it's SA or human, mm. whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. Uh, these people are doing things they're not, uh, that they're being forced to do. And it yeah, see, and this is what I a lot of people actually, including myself, no, Tennessee Poppy, you're not blocked, I see you. But this is what a lot of people uh, pointed out during that one stream that I just uh, talked about. The point was, it's like, there's a reason why a lot of cases are not being reported, and it's not good reasons. And there's, it's very complicated. There's a lot of different reasons why people do. Sometimes it's not... Um, yeah, it's, I'm not even going to go into that, but there's many, many factors that go into why a SA situation is not reported to the police. And it's like, 
you know, you can pass all the laws that you want, but that's not going to force the situation to, uh, that, that's not the answer. That's not going to help. And we've already gone over this and Betty seems to think, you know, on one hand, you know, less government is better. And on the other hand, we need to pass more and more and more and more and more laws to legislate things that have no real, that they don't actually solve the problem that she's wanting solved. And there are some, some issues, and I hate to say this, but I'm, I suspect that this is one of those issues that are probably not going to be solved with law enforcement or the courts because there's just, there is just some people that are never going to report it. And there's a lot of factors that go into why that is. But um, like I said, passing a law is not going to uh, force someone to report something. <laughs> She'll never get it. She knows zero about public policy. Yeah, I mean, right. Did she say, did she said kind of stupid, kind of dumb, no kind of to it? <laughs> LOL, right. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Clara. So 25, 40. Okay. If you know anything about me, I'm a liberty person. You don't force nobody to do crap. But you, you know, just, but um, so and not only that, but you're talking about women. And you're a liberty person and you don't want to force people to do something, but then you want to pass laws to force them to do something. Oh, okay. Children. So I had, but we can't fix a problem when, when they're not reporting the true facts of what's going on in this country. It is a lot more rampant. I can guarantee you South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina had a hell of a lot more, excuse my language, than 19 cases of trafficking in their community. Oh yeah. I, I don't doubt that at all, Benny. I, I'm sure that it's probably a lot higher in all jurisdictions across the country, across the world. But passing a law is not going to solve that issue. It's a lot more complicated than you're wanting to make it out to be. It's because they're not reporting it properly. And we need to start reporting it properly. You know, women just don't just don't go and, and get into that trade for, for no reason. They're forced there, whether it's by drugs or by somebody. Women just don't do that. I mean, I don't know any woman that just wants to go and, and, and be with strangers. I, I just don't, I don't know. it. So something's forcing them to do it, whether it's drugs or somebody's forcing them to do it or a combination of both. Because let's be honest, most of these kids are groomed from young teenagers. So they're already being pumped with some drugs to get them addicted. Once they're addicted, they are, they are a slave to that, that pimp. They are a slave to that pimp. The, the key to controlling their, their girls is the drugs. That's how they control them. You ever noticed how hyper focused she is on that particular subject? It's weird, right? I mean, I get that this is a subject that you probably come across doing true crime, you know, here and there, but to be so hyper focused on it all the time, that's a little weird for me. When they're doing wrong, they take them, they take them away. When they're doing right, they give them. They're their friend. They're their they're their doctor, right? you all do you guys have to understand that my members or my mods work very very hard it's not easy modding um on the bullhorn buddy channel as you guys can imagine you watch what i have gone through um <laughs> unprovoked you know it, 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 oh, i don't unprovoked. deserve and didn't deserve what oh. um i was subjected to here on oh. youtube for being this is one of those times where you should have shut the fuck up if you had had a lawyer they would have told you just don't even talk about it but thanks for talking about it a content creator that goes out. It doesn't matter whether people uh, approve of my conduct or not. Uh, it matters whether my conduct is lawful and I'm acting in accordance with our laws. Um, and, and that I do. And I'm proud to say that. If people don't like the laws, that's on them. Get your asses out of your chairs and go change them. If you don't like what I'm doing, speak up and say something to your politicians. Don't come and do illegal conduct toward me. But you, we all know <laughs> what goes on here on YouTube, and it can be absolutely horrible. But we she is the ultimate victim. We have created a beautiful and wonderful family that is growing, a true family here on YouTube that is growing, and it's called the Coffee Club. And when we started the Coffee Club out two years ago, I never anticipated it growing the way it has grown. And I never anticipated meeting great people that I met because when I was, you know, pushed onto the YouTube platform, people weren't nice. <laughs> Okay, you weren't pushed onto the YouTube platform. You chose 
to be on the YouTube platform. You chose to do it and you can choose to leave that this is, these are all your choices. Okay. Nobody's forcing you to be here. You know, they were jealous. They were, they were upset. And um, a lot of the things that I'm dealing with even this week and this last month have a lot to do with the work that I did. Um, and that being, you know, noticed by people, not idiots on YouTube, but by real people out there um, that want to, you know, tell the story. So, so let me get this straight. So she thinks that people don't like her on here because one, we're jealous of her life. Okay. And then two, because we're jealous that she's getting noticed by people outside of YouTube. Are you talking about the Vanity Fair article where the writer very like truthfully wrote that you were unscrupulous? Yeah. I've, I've never had an article written about me <laughs> and say that. I'm, I'm fine with that actually, Betty, but okay. I mean, some of these people, I'm just like, can you name one thing about Betty's life that I should be jealous about? Because if I was Betty, I would be in therapy because I would be depressed all the time. I would hate my life if I was her. Oh, it's been it's been a whirlwind for me here um, in Florida with the stuff. You know, it's kind of pushed us back a little bit on some of our goals because I wasn't anticipating uh, this coming up. And it is. So here we are. Um but we work very, very hard here. We travel the country. We've really put our money where our mouth is here. We don't go. Aww. There's something wrong. You know, it's funny because uh, in your lawsuit, you said that you never leave your house because you're scared. Now you're saying you travel the country. Hmm. Wow, that's so interesting, buddy. We don't just keep running with the same story. We want to know what is true and what isn't true. And sometimes we can't do that here from Florida. You know, we need to go there and we need to get our feet on the ground and we need to ask people <laughs> the questions and find out the truth. And that's what we do. And so we've been attacked quite a bit um, for the work that we did. I don't care. And I will continue to do it. And if I ever choose to do a protest anywhere, that's my choice and my right as an American citizen in this country. It's my rights to harass people. So you say that you don't care about the flack that you've been getting on this platform, but you're going to sue somebody for it? That kind of tells me that you care. And I will do it. I'm a one-man show. I don't need to have an entourage of people um, to be advocating for justice. If I'm in a community and it calls for me to protest, I will stop what I'm doing and grab my bullhorn and go out there and fight for injustice. Well, why haven't you done that, Betty? You haven't done that in a long time. I mean, if you did that, you'd probably get more views because most of the people that are sub to you are a bunch of Karens that that is precisely why they subscribe to you to begin with. It's like, hmm, okay. That's what you get with the Bullhorn Betty channel. And I don't care who doesn't like it and who likes it. I don't care. Well, see, that's the thing. It's like, you know, you will tell people that's what you get at the Bullhorn Betty channel. People subscribe to you and then you don't give them that and then they unsubscribe. Or they stay subscribed, but they don't actually watch your content anymore. That's kind of one of the many reasons why your channel is failing right now. It's my right as an American citizen. It's my right. And if you know anything about me, I follow the law. And I will do everything I am able to do under the law because the law affords me the opportunities and the rights to do those things. And if people don't want to support it, then don't support it. Don't support it. But what you don't have a right to do is turn my life upside down. You do not have the right um, to go and stalk me online, go stalk me in person. Just because I have a YouTube does not make me, under the law, a, a public person. Oh, Betty, this is going to be so much fun. This is going to be so much fun covering your case with Queen. I cannot wait. Fun times ahead, Betty. Okay? You need to understand every single thing out there has a legal definition to it. I am a private citizen. I am not a public person under the law of this country. And why is that important? Because that tells other people what they can and cannot do, what, where they're allowed to go and where they're not allowed to go. Uh, so it just kind of started over again. Let me get that timestamp that you guys were telling me about. One second. He said 2540. I'm so sorry I missed it. 2540. 
Okay, hold on one second. Is Janie on the run? Okay, so it's this one. Okay, so let me get this queued up. Twenty-five forty. Okay, so let's see. I must have missed it. My bad. Thank you so much uh, for sending me this. Let's see what she says. Felt that anybody wanted, and yes, I did have a chance to talk to the family. It's heartbreaking, but take a look. Why me? Like that's the father. That's that that. Uh, am I right, Gigi? Because that's the photo of the person that you sent to me right there. I believe that is her real father. Wow. That was her father from the beginning. AJ Smith, the father of two-year-old Winter Cole Smith. I'm angry that she's gone. I'm angry she had to deal with that. I'm sad I didn't get to see her. I just got a clip of her saying she doesn't want to be on YouTube, but the press gets get the cases wrong, so she does it. Okay. She she lives for her YouTube channel. I'm sad I don't get to be with her. I'm sad I, I wasn't here for her. So many emotions for this 24-year-old senior at the University of Tennessee, Martin. A senior at the University of Tennessee. This is a man that's trying to change his life and do better for his himself and his family. This is a man that's working hard, and he has to deal with another man destroying his universe, what? destroying his world. Look at this man. This man is broken. Betty, you falsely identified him and blamed him for the crime. Okay. Wow. Yeah, um, Betty, I don't know. <laughs> wow. So um, in 2023, black people go to college. It's kind of a thing now. So I just want to throw that out there. Wow. Okay. Just because he's, uh, uh, wow, okay. Betty, just because he's black does not mean he lives in the ghetto or that he's on Section 8 housing because I know that's where you're going. Broken. Because of an animal. A monster. A receiver for the football team and trying to further himself to have made a better life for himself and Winter. My son, he worked so hard to go to college to play football so he could live a dream for him and winter i used to keep some stuff and then tell her mom like i, I lost it like wow. i forgot to pack it and i'm glad i did so i can hold on to it the little memories are so big now turning his life around why does it need to be turned around yeah um if there's no indication that the father had any kind of life to turn around but uh okay all that two-year-old winter was found by fbi agents wednesday night in the is that all the clip that you wanted me to play not sure how long it goes trying to change his life what's wrong with his life <laughs> great question yeah she's beginning to uh, call people animals now which i think is also so on brand for her watching you from beautiful puerto Re puerto valata valarta much love oh wow that's awesome. Thank you. Completely butchered that name. <laughs> he's just a hardworking, motivated guy, right? Uh, yeah, he's a just a human. Like, he's just uh, seems like an ordinary, nice guy who worked hard. She makes another comment similar later, but it's basically the same, but she does it two more times. Oh, God. Ugh. I mean, what can I say? It's kind of what she does. Wow. So, oh, you can send me the clip. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, this was a lot, this stream. I would love to know your thoughts. Oh, uh, again, somebody was asking earlier, I do not block comments just because you disagree with me. Okay. Sometimes Google will put it in held for review. And I have to go back there and manually approve it, but I am not deleting comments that where you disagree with me.
No racism, no doxing. Other than that, disagree with me, disagree with each other, keep it civil. Like I said, I encourage civil discourse here. So I'm very interested in hearing what you have to say. I never really paid attention to Zab Girl, but I will be paying attention now. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. And I know that there is a particular uh, locale who is trying to get her late night views in. Um, I'm not going to be watching. She wants so badly for me to review her again. And I'm just not going to give her the satisfaction. I will say that if she's going to call people hypocrites, then she needs to find where I have ever posted any autopsy photos on my channel ever. I've never done that. Therefore, the word hypocrisy doesn't apply here. So, oh, it's Mexico. Cool. <laughs> cool. Hope you're having a good time. Um, anyway, guys, I will, um, wow, it's, it's over two, two hours, 30 minutes. It's way longer than I normally go. Anyway, guys, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Um, thanks again for being here. Um, again, the, I will do a community tab post about the PayPal pool for Queen Bee's legal, um, legal fund, um, is my understanding that she has a lawyer and they will be doing things the right way. They'll, she is going to be completely transparent. Show all receipts and all of that and updates will be in the PayPal pool. Any updates I will also be posting on my channel. Um, and also like I donated myself as well. So this is not something that I'm saying to do that I haven't done already myself. So um, if you would like to help a single mom out defend herself against Bullhorn Betty's frivolous lawsuit, feel free to drop a couple dollars. Um, you can donate anonymously. You don't have to leave your name. Um, I really appreciate everyone ahead of time who decides to donate. If you, if you can't donate, I completely understand. Sharing it is just as good. And I really appreciate that. So... Yeah, Queen lawyered up, and Betty is representing herself. Ask JLR how that works out. Even JLR says that that's not a winning strategy. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I'll play you out with some dim things, and you guys have a great week. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. What's up, homies? It's crazy looks right here, homie. No. Much love to the fans. It don't stop. Won't stop. With the thines. With the thines. Won't stop. With the thines. Cushion. Won't stop. With the thines. Cushion. Won't stop. With the thines. Cushion. I'll beat your mother. Ass if I wanted to. Don't stop, won't stop. Real stuff. Don't stop, won't stop. Real stuff. Don't stop, won't stop. Real stuff. Perfect. Lovers can't yeah. Yeah. Won't stop with the thanks. Christian. Won't stop with the thanks. Christian. Won't stop with the thanks. Christian. What's God no loves? Keep on pushing.
I wanted to. I beat the motherfucking ass if I wanted to. Y'all know. I beat the motherfucking ass if I wanted to. Y'all know. Y'all know. Y'all know.